Mm. Good afternoon, Professor Kitadong. Good afternoon. Hello. <laughs> Is that time to go? Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Can I say a few opening remarks? This one? Yeah, yes. I think yes. so. Shall we start? It's uh, exactly uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Please, uh, Professor Kitano, as a okay, president thank you, of MESDA. Yeah, thank you, everyone. On behalf of MESDA, I would like to say a few words at the opening of this course as a chairman of MESDA. Welcome to our MESDA webinar. Minimary in the surgery for rectal cancer today. MESDA has been conducting the training course since we established in 2016 uh, uh, due to their all member activities. And we reached to this 17th workshop on of July. This, this time, we hold ad hoc online events separate from our continuing workshop. I'd like to say thank you to the course director, Associate Professor Pawat uh, Sutarat and uh, international faculties, Professor Masaaki Ito from Japan and the local faculties from Thailand for joining us today. I'm so grateful and proud that there have been so many young surgeons were trained so far, more than 600 trainees from Mekong regions such as Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam in the field of endoscopy surgery with the various areas. I hope we all can learn a lot of from the expert of minimal surgery, rectal cancer surgery, and obtain new knowledges and skills from them. Okay, let's start it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Kitano. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, our uh, vice president. Uh, okay, we will go to the first topics. Uh, the first speaker, Professor Masagi Ito, he is a famous author, a colorectal surgeon in Japan and also in Thailand too. So he is the head of Department of Colorectal Surgery Division in. Uh, National Cancer Center is in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and he also, today he will give us very special lectures about the update of TATME. Professor Masito, please. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me this very great meeting uh, all, for all of my friends in Thailand. So, Pawit, thank you. And also, I am really Thanks to the uh, leader of uh, Professor Bitun and the Professor Kitano Sensei, so and also the uh, old uh, Thailand colleague. So I miss you. <laughs> so how are you doing now? So uh, in recent uh, current status in Japan is uh, patient of COVID nineteen is a little bit uh, decreasing now after uh, Olympic finished. So uh today so i'd like to talk about the uh update of TATME. uh about the, uh i'd like to show the recent uh research of mine so i switch to the slide can you see my slides Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, at the beginning of my talk, I'd like to show the uh, TATME figure like this. So, I love TATME procedure uh, since uh, nineteen. Uh, sorry, uh, two thousand thirteen. So, uh, about the, I have the eight to nine years. Uh, experience of TATME. So uh, one of the greatest merit is we can see a whole area of the pelvic space from below. And also straight dissection is uh, uh, we 
we could perform by the straight dissection. So no needs using multi-joint forceps uh, like a Da Vinci system. So very convenient and a very uh, com comfortable procedure for us. So uh, we have, there are some uh, candidate of the uh, strategy for uh, surgical option for rectal cancer. There are three options, a lap, robot, and TATME. So I think the lap and the robot is a very similar approach uh, from above. TATME is entirely different concept, so from below. So uh, different between the lap and the robot is the uh, devices. Lap has the very straight devices, robot has articulated devices. So uh, view from below is entirely different with the TATME. So why uh, we love TATME? Uh, what are potential advantage in performing the TATME is, so TATME has improved visualization from below, easy access to rectum, aids better quality TME, uh, accurate distal margin. Uh, this is a very, uh, very reliable uh, advantage. And uh, 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 later, I, I will show the, uh, this uh, benefit of uh, anastomosis. Safe anastomosis was produced by avoiding dock ear and multiple firing. And uh, two team procedure could uh, provide us drastic reduction by two teams approach. Or you know that uh, this is a very uh, famous paper about the TATME of the uh, registry data uh, included in uh, 720 cases. Uh, this registration data shows that uh, R0 resection uh, is uh, very high and uh, all, only 22.4% of positive CRM was preserved in this uh, trial. So uh, at that time, uh, we uh, think uh, this approach could reduce the uh, positive CRM in uh, rectal cancer treatment. Uh, however, two years ago, so from Norway, very uh, bad news was uh, brought to ours about the TATME has very high uh, local recurrence rate of uh, 11% compared to the usual uh, TATME, TME procedure had 2.4%. And also the anastomotic leakage rate is 8.4% in TATME compared with the 4.5% in TME procedure. So uh, at that time, uh, this, uh, we are uh, getting this bad news from Norway. So uh, uh, all over the world uh, collector uh, doctors had a very opposite feeling uh, to the TATME at that time. But uh, this is from the uh, Dutch. So long about the long-term oncological result after TATME for rectal carcinoma. Uh, this report has conducted by the two center study. So uh, more than uh, 100 cases and a very good local recurrence rate of 2.0% at three years and 4% and five years. And also another report has, uh, uh, we, we could get the uh, uh, outcome from a multi-center cohort study. So this study also showed a very uh, good local recurrence rate of 3% at two years 4% at three years. So uh, this uh, study shows uh, a good local, uh, local regi regi uh, regional control after TATME. If the uh, procedure was uh, performed in a selected cases from the very uh, large center with a uh, very higher skill. So uh, what what went wrong in Norway? Maybe uh, we could point out the three uh, points, three uh, uh, clinical issues. 
first is uh, Norway uh, did not select uh, correct, correctly the patient uh, in performing the TATME. So uh, through the, their uh, paper, among 20 patients with recurrent cases, only one received neoadjuvant treatment, despite 8% patient having the stage three and the stage two disease. And also uh, most important thing is they have very low case volume. So uh, three center abandoned TATME after just five cases and the other four averaged uh, less than 10 TATME cases per year. And also the inadequate preparation was pointed out. So I think that uh, to avoid uh, such a disaster in the performing the TATME, so most important thing before starting TATME, uh, uh, first is uh, to get personal suture technique from below uh, to avoid uh, cancer dissemination during the uh, TATME procedure. And also second is to understand unfamiliar surgical anatomy from below. So uh, I think the uh, left figure is a very perfect uh, person strict, uh, person suture very beautiful, uh, very even passing suture was observed in the left figure. And opposite the right figure shows a very ugly uh, feature after a passing suture. So I think the very even and uh, very beautiful uh, passing suture is very important to avoid uh, such a disaster uh, in terms of local recurrence. So uh, we need to train that uh, transanal passing suture. Uh, so this is, a, uh, in, we innovated uh, such a training, uh, dry training box uh, in terms of the uh, passing, distal passing suture in Japan. And also that we, uh, I, instead, I would like to insist on the uh, important of understanding anatomy from below. So uh, repeatedly, I, uh, told you the uh, importance of recognition of longitudinal muscle fiber uh, around all around the rectum. So uh, zero o'clock and six o'clock is a little, little bit uh, thicker. Uh, longitudinal muscle fiber is observed like like the urethral muscle and the rectal coccygeal muscle. <laughs> uh, in anterior side, so usually the, we uh, felt a very difficult feeling in dissecting anterior side of the rectum. But uh, TATME, uh, we could see uh, very clearly recognize uh, long term muscle fiber of rectal urethral muscle. Uh, this distance is about uh, five to uh, six millimeter, so that we, need, we could uh, control the dissection line uh, depend on the T stage. And also the uh, posterior side of the lateral side, so we also the uh, change the surgical uh, plane to secure in our CRM. So if the tumor is advanced side, uh, we, need, uh, we can uh, dissect below the endoblic fascia. So uh, this is uh, uh, T3 cases, uh, lo uh, tumor located in the posterior side. So uh, in such a cases, sometimes positive CRM was pre uh, observed. So, uh, these cases have the, some risk of uh, positive CRM, but uh, in TATME procedure provide a little bit of deep uh, dissection procedure like this. So uh, now a uh, CARA3 trial is conduct, uh, go on, ongoing now. So uh, actually the, our institute is uh, joining this CARA3 trial. So uh, included the patient is about the half of the planned patient and uh, now uh, about maybe 600 or 700 patients uh, already included in color 3 trial. Maybe one or two years has passed this color 3 trial has completed. So uh, this uh, uh, complication, uh, next uh, we, we move to the complication. So first uh, important complication is CO2 embolization. So to tell the truth, so uh, I experienced more than maybe uh, 10, uh, 20 cases, more than 20 cases I experienced already. 
So the、uh, most important thing is we、uh, should identify the whole of、uh, injury site,、uh, usually the、uh, very small hole of vein. So、uh, if we did not、uh, aware of the, such an、uh, injury for the vein, so a patient,、uh, uh, vital sign is uh, uh, go to bad status. So、uh, I'd like to show the short video. So、uh, this is a neurovascular bundle area. So you can see. Uh, very sorry, very small video. You could see the small、uh, hole in the、uh, vein of the neurovascular bundle area. So,、uh, in separation uh, is uh, by the separation, separation of、uh, 15 to 20 milli, milli Hg. So, we did not see the,、uh, any bleeding. But if we stop the in separation, maybe the bleeding was observed. From、uh, this hole of the vein. So, we need to identify the, such an injury for the vein quickly. And uh, uh, next, very important complication is、uh, urethral injury. So,、uh, this very famous paper from, of the,、uh, Patricia Shira clearly showed that、uh, this very major complication is strongly associated with lack of experience. So, the、uh, less than eight experience is, experience is very strongly associated with、uh, such a urethral injury. So,、uh, to avoid、uh, such an injury, so we、uh, sometimes、uh, use the、uh, lightning catheter.、Uh, we、uh, insert it from the、uh, ure urethra so that we change the use using、uh, fluorescent scope. Clearly shows the lightning. So we、uh, identify the existence of the urethra like this. So we could identify、uh, this is a、uh, lesion of urethra. So、uh, this lightning、uh, catheter is very helpful, helpful for us、uh, during the TATME to avoid、uh, such a complication. So Actually, the,、uh, in Japan,、uh, we are co collecting a very、uh, huge number of the video of laparoscopic surgery. So, uh, uh, so uh, we are collecting the、uh, database of the video, and the、uh, uh, information uh, was uh, collected, and the AI, artificial intelligence, is learning the、uh, very many、uh, annotations. Data. So,、uh, this is、uh, one of the results of the database in Japan. So,、uh, this is to avoid the、uh, uh, urethral injury, yeah, urethra,、uh, and also the、uh, prostate. So, left is the main monitor, right is the sub monitor. So, during the surgery, we real time a recognition of the such prostate or urethra was uh, completed. Uh, Using such an innovative、uh, system like this. And、uh, next, move to the、uh, anastomotic leakage. So,、uh, this report included in uh, uh, more than 1,000 cases、uh, from the registry, registry data.、Uh, anastomotic leakage rate is uh, about uh, 10% of the cases. So, I think a little bit high. So, and also the、uh, large tumor、uh, in obese、uh, di diabetics,、uh, male p a t i e n t、uh, who smoke has the、uh, highest risk of the anastomotic failure. And uh, uh, as for our de department、uh, to prevent anastomotic leakage, so we utilize i n d o c e n i n g r e、uh, f l o r o s c e n angiography、uh, since、uh, 2016. And also,、uh, staple anastomosis with, with a reinforced suture was started from the 2018. So,、uh, in TATME, we need to close the distal part of the rectum.、Uh, so, uh, we usually uh, uh, perform a single stapling technique、uh, followed by TATME procedure,、uh, following TATME procedure like this. 
So we close uh, perfectly uh, by using this procedure and uh, place uh, a small size uh, catheter like this and the tightening. So recently, the size of the catheter is uh, uh, 14 to uh, 16 French is uh, uh, best. So uh, this catheter guide the devices from below and uh, uh, abdominal team uh, could identify the devices like this. So uh, next, uh, followed by the docking from uh, abdom abdominal team like this. So, uh, so uh, this procedure provides us uh, 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 no multiple firing and uh, no dock ear like this. And after that, so uh, we change the position of the hooking of long star retractor like this uh, to move the anosmotic uh, line to the uh, anal side uh, to make the uh, Hansen anosmosis, anosmosis easier. So uh, by changing the anosmotic uh, side to the anal side, so we could make the hands anosmosis uh, very comfortably like this. So uh, I uh, mostly the performed hands uh, reinforced suture on the stapler line was performed for the most of the cases in TATME. So uh, this procedure provide the very uh, tightness uh, is uh, strong, stronger like this. So uh, data after uh, single stepping technique followed by hands anastomosis from uh, our institute, early anastomotic leakage is only 1.8% compared to the 8.4% in uh, Hansen uh, group. So a very uh, uh, anosmotic leak uh, reduced uh, with the staple with Hansen anosmosis. Also pelvic abscess and anosmotic stenosis is also less and overall anosmotic complication is drastically less compared to the usual Hansen anosmosis uh, in a very low rectal cases uh, five centimeter within anal verge. So I think double pursing, double pursing anastomosis like this shows uh, no dock ear, no multiple firing, no need for uh, distal mobilization of the rectum. And uh, also uh, finally the uh, leakage rate has reducing, be reducing in our institute. So uh, another uh, potential merit uh, in TATME is uh, better recognition of the autonomic nerve system from below. So neurovascular bundle and the pelvic plexus and the pelvic splanking nerve is uh, exists in the same layer of the uh, prehypogastric nerve fascia. So uh, neurovascular bundle is very clearly uh, recognized from below like a uh, left figure and also a uh, third or fourth sacral nerve is also recognized like a uh, right figure. So uh, this is our rep uh, recent report uh, in terms of the uh, urinary function after TATME. So we could recognize the amount of the res resection range of the autonomic nerve system from, uh, from below. So pattern A is completely uh, preserved of the autonomic nerve system. So the uh, type B, uh, pattern B, pattern C, and the pattern D is gradually the uh, uh, res resected range is bigger. So uh, if we uh, identify, we recognize whole autonomic nerve was uh, preserved from below. So uh, urinary dysfunction is uh, barely few. So 3.8% uh, in uh, after one month post-operatively. So this data is uh, about the half of the robotic system. So usual robotics uh, paper shows uh, eight, uh, five to 10% of the di uh, urinary dysfunction in uh, one month post-operatively. And also lab shows uh, uh, included 15 to 20% of the cases is go to the uh, urinary dysfunction. So uh, this uh, data uh, potentially shows uh, the TA, TME could uh, reduce the urinary function 
give you a release function. So uh, we could see the uh, force uh, sets, uh, circular now like this. And also another uh, merit is we could uh, identify the uh, entrance to the lateral space. So uh, this is our uh, cases, uh, very, interest in, uh, very in very interesting case. Uh, very uh, patient had very strong caution uh, of the uh, lateral lymph node dissection. So uh, this case had received a, a preoperative chemoradiotherapy and also uh, performed TATME, uh, TME plus uh, lateral lymph node dissection following CRT. However, so uh, five months after surgery, we could see a very small uh, lymph node and uh, this uh, lymph nodes grow, grow uh, bigger in 10 months. And uh, after that, uh, uh, one year after surgery, uh, we could recognize uh, a recurrent uh, tumor. Maybe that this is a, a luminant lymph node in uh, a lateral lymph node area, maybe around the uh, inferior vesicular artery. So we have, uh, I think that two message, uh, lymph node less than five millimeters sometimes resulted in uh, lateral local recurrence. And the lateral local recurrence could be observed after lateral pelvic node dissection. So maybe uh, from uh, my experience, uh, this area, the bottom of the pelvis is very dangerous. Sometimes lymph node around the inferior vesicular artery is uh, sometimes very dangerous. Sometimes uh, we could not resect uh, from above because this is a very uh, deep pelvic area and uh, we could uh, sometimes some lymph nodes remain uh, even if we perform the lateral lymph node dissection. So uh, we uh, started the uh, uh, transanal lateral lymph node dissection uh, in uh, we are showing the video. So uh, this is a very uh, good merit in, in uh, uh, deep, deepest area of the pelvic space. So this, so uh, firstly that we identify the uh, obturator uh, vessel like this. And uh, after that, we back to the uh, bottom of the pelvis. So this area is very important area. So uh, sometimes uh, abdominal uh, procedure could not reject uh, this fat uh, because of the uh, very uh, deep and uh, sometimes uh, not approaching from the uh, from uh, above. So uh, you you could see that this lymph node is uh, along the inferior uh, vesicle uh, vessels like this. So sometimes uh, this uh, remnant lymph node result resulted uh, in. Uh, uh, local recurrence uh, after, uh, even if the, we perform the lateral lymph node dissection. So also uh, anterior side, uh, some, uh, this is a, a TPE uh, pr prostatectomy was added for the patient. Uh, the patient has a very aggressive disease. Uh, rectal was uh, ad uh, uh, very close to the prostate. So, so uh, I now uh, dissecting the around the uh, urethra. So, uh, so approaching to the urethra, and uh, uh, we could see the uh, catheter. Uh, urethra catheter was uh, observed. So, removing the catheter. And uh, we uh, would like to dissect the uh, urethra uh, wall uh, it all around. And uh, uh, remaining uh, deep, uh, DVC is sometimes we met a uh, uh, big bleeding in this area. So to avoid the uh, uh, disaster of the bleeding, so uh, we uh, sometimes, uh, we uh, always inserted uh, such a linear cutter devices from below. So this uh, direction of insertion of uh, linear cutter is very uh, suitable uh, from below and the cutting uh, pro uh, provide uh, no bleeding procedure like this.
And also, uh, this is the case of the advanced case in female uh, rectal tumor is embedded to the uh, vagina. So uh, we could see the uh, embedded lesion uh, from below like this. So uh, enough margin was kept uh, in this procedure and uh, uh, dissecting the vaginal wall. And also the closure of vagina is comfortable from below like this. So in a posterior side, so this is a recurrent cases. So uh, recurrent cases, uh, recurrent uh, tumor is observed in the on the cellular bone and uh, uh, we perform a CRT first. So after CRT, a very small uh, uh, resection margin, but uh, this area is about the first cellular uh, level. So we uh, could not resect the whole uh, cellular bone. So we resect, uh, we uh, dissect the surface of a uh, cellular bone. So uh, this is a recurrent area. And uh, uh, TATME uh, provide a uh, uh, little bit of deep uh, dissection plane. And uh, uh, to approaching to the uh, tumor area. So we steadily, uh, we strictly dissect on the uh, surface of a cellular bone like this. Uh, we try to keep the uh, resection margin for the uh, recurrent cases. So uh, we are uh, burning and uh, dissecting, the, uh, uh, exposing the surface of bone like this. So actually the, we keep the uh, pathological uh, good margin was uh, kept uh, by such a procedure from below. And uh, in the huge tumor, sometimes uh, in such a very huge uh, gist is also the very good candidate uh, in uh, perf uh, to perform a two teams procedure. So uh, this big gist is uh, we usually the select uh, initially the deep plane like this. So below the endoperic fascia uh, to uh, dissect along the uh, levator and muscle and uh, uh, opposite side of the tumor, we selected the usual uh, uh, TME plane so uh, depend on the tumor site, we change the uh, dissection plane. So uh, tumor is uh, located in uh, left side. So in this area, we dissect a little bit of the deep plane uh, to expose the levator and muscle like this. So, uh, and uh, uh, we can see the uh, tumor. And uh, finally, the, we preserve uh, a, 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 the inner preservation was successfully done, uh, even if the, uh, such a very huge uh, gist. So uh, current, our strategy uh, of our institute is uh, most of high tumor was uh, performed with laparoscopy. So other middle tumor, low tumor, and obese patient was performed with TATME uh, with two teams, uh, a laparoscope, uh, TATME with two teams procedure, LAP and TATME. And a very difficult case, uh, like the T4 case or recurrent rate case, uh, we perform also two teams, but the open and the LAP, uh, or open and TATME. This is our current strategy. So uh, I love the, such a two teams procedure because uh, very drastically uh, operating time is reducing. So average our uh, TME operating time is about a two hour and a half. So, and the combination procedure by two teams uh, provided us uh, greatly facilitating a complete completion of the TME and double checking of the nerve preservation and uh, enough CRM by two directions. However, so most important uh, problem is uh, too many doctor was needed in perform this procedure. So uh, in our institute, so we, uh, we are innovating the uh, surgical robotic system. 
uh, replacing the uh, scopist and uh, uh, assistant in the abdominal team, and also the uh, scopist in uh, uh, anal team. So uh, this robotic system is uh, had a uh, surgical surgeon can control the robotic arms in patient side and semi -auto automatic system equipped. And uh, one scope and the two arms equipped in the robotic system and the cost benefit is included. So uh, mostly this robotic was uh, completed uh, already. So uh, it, now we are uh, applying to the uh, government uh, to uh, permit to use uh, in Japan in end of uh, 2021. Uh, this company name is Attraction. The, this uh, company is uh, in our institute. But uh, this company of Attraction was acquire, acquired by the uh, big company, uh, Asahi Intec, in March uh, this year. So this is a, a promotion video of uh, uh, this robotic system. So this is a, a final a production of uh, uh, this uh, system. This name is another uh, answer, uh, meaning of another surgeon. So the, this uh, arm has a articulated joint like this. So uh, if the, lo this robotic systems uh, will go to market, uh, maybe next year, maybe two teams procedure. We uh, there are uh, two surgeon could perform two teams procedure with this robotic system. So, uh, in conclusion of my talk, uh, TA TME is technically feasible, but uh, some oncological outcome is not still clear. So the technique is associated with some uh, specific complication such as higher anastomotic leakage, urethral injury, or interoperative tumor spillage. So uh, such a noble disaster is uh, very uh, strongly associated with the interoperative tumor sp uh, spillage uh, by the lack of the uh, parsing suture, uh, pasturing suture technique. And oppositely, the single stapling anastomosis plus hands-soon the enforced suture following TME could reduce anastomotic leakage rate. So a data was shown in our, our institute and uh, we could recognize autonomic nerve system from below better than from above, uh, which leads a better post-operative urinary function. Uh, TA TME can safer apply for the complicated co uh, colorectal tumor, such as lateral node positive patient, uh, recurrent cases, or huge tumor cases. And uh, uh, our uh, current robotic system can solve the uh, current problem of two team surgery requiring, requiring five surgeons. Thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Professor. It was very nice lectures. So we will keep the question in the last session. So we will go on to Another speaker that's by introduction by Professor Atapal. Thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker is a uh, Professor Superkit Komilai. He is uh, our famous uh, surgical endoscopist, especially for the in the field of uh, colorectal uh, surgery. Now he is uh, currently head of surgical uh, endoscopy colorectal divisions. Department of Surgery, King Chulalongka Memorial Hospital. Please welcome Professor Subaki. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, I start with my sharing of my slide. Did you see my slide? Yes, yes, you okay. see it. So, okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank you, the organizing committee, to give me the opportunity to share my experience today. And I am Dr. Subakit Kumbilai from Surgical Endoscopy, Chulalongkorn Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand. This is my hospital in the center of Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. I'm a co-vital surgeon and my main work is colonoscopy. I take care of our surgical endoscopy in our hospital. They are different when we do selection for the procedure to remove colorectal cancer. 
in the colon, surgical resection have lower morbidity and shorter operative time compared to the rectum. So rectal surgery is more challenging, but for endoscopic resection, because of the thinner colonic wall and longer insertion part of the colonoscopy, cause more challenging for dissecting in the colon than in the rectum, which we are dissection outside peritoneum cavity and shorter insertion part of the colonoscopy, so it's easier to control the scope. For this lesion, invasive parietal cancer, they need surgery for oncologic resection and imagine that it is located deep down in the male pelvis who have big belly, it's not easy to do the TME. And these are the results after surgery, either laparoscopic approach or open surgery. We need surgical wound to enter abdominal cavity and sometimes colostomy was created. Complication after the colectomy are largely 20%, even with laparoscopic approach are the same. But these are just immediate complications after surgery. They have more complication later, such as cut off suction from addition and complication related to the ostomy. At the same for rectal surgery, complications are largely 22%, even with laparoscopic approach are the same. Compared to endoscopic resection, this patient is not easy to do the TME for him, but he underwent ESD for ascending colon lesion, and this is post-operative day one. He can enjoy walking around the hospital and go back home in a few days. The data of ESD procedure from National Cancer Center Hospital in Japan, the file perforation is 3.5%, and almost all of them can manage by conservative treatment without surgery. As the same for multi-center data analysis for ESD procedure in Japan, show 5% perforation rate, which need emergency operation only 0.4%. From this data, it seems to be better for the patient if we can do endoscopic treatment for the colorectal lesion we found, but not all of them we can do endoscopic resection. We can do endoscopic resection for colorectal cancer if there are no leads for lymph node metastasis. But if they have a chance to have lymph node metastasis, surgical resection should be performed following oncologic resection principle. And we have to keep in mind that if there are carcinomatous area, it should never be cut into pieces. It needs on box resection. From our own data, surgical endoscopy, Jilalongkorn Hospital, we found lymph node metastasis 10.4% in T1 colorectal cancer. From this data, nine from 10 patients do not need surgery to remove lymph node, only endoscopic treatment as local treatment is adequate for oncologic resection. Thanks to our Japanese endoscopies, they found that malignant polyps are classified by depth of the cancer invasion as intermucosal cancer, superficial submucosal cancer, and deep submucosal cancer. The cutoff level of tumor invasion is 1,000 micron from musculoskeletal mucosa. If the cancer invades beyond this point, it has a chance to have lymph node metastasis. And with the superficial submucosal cancer without lymphovascular invasion or poly differentiation, they have very really low risk to metastasis to the lymph node. So in that JSCCR guideline in 2019, they recommend to do endoscopic resection for TIS and T1 colorectal cancer if the depth of submucosal invasion is less than 1,000 micron without lymphovascular invasion, no poly differentiation component, and no budding. So it means that for invasive cancer or deep submucosal cancer, we have to do surgical resection to remove lymph node because they have a chance for lymph node metastasis. But for early colorectal cancer, which is intramucosal cancer and superficial submucosal cancer, we can do endoscopic treatment as local excision and it is adequate as oncologic resection. So, when we as a endoscopy, when we found a lesion, we do in vivo characterized polyp by using magnified chromo endoscopy, either NBI or dye like in the cocamide or crystal violet. Then decide proper treatment for the patient, surgery for invasive cancer to remove lymph node or endoscopic treatment, which have several techniques now today. Polypectomy, COSNA are very popular right now, and EMR or ESD. NBI is optical filter technology which change wavelength of the light from white to blue and green, which hemoglobin can be absorbed. 
and we can see superficial vascular pattern and surface structure. We use NICE classification to classify polyp and decide proper treatment. NICE classification, we look at the color, vascular pattern, and surface pattern of polyps. In some cases, we need more details observation by magnified colonoscopy. Genetic classification are essential to differentiate malignant polyps. The most important is genet 2 b lesion, which consists of some invasive cancer. With the power of new endoscopy system like Olympus EVIT X1, we can detect more lesion and give accurate characterization by using better tech image technology like NBI. Then we can choose the proper treatment for the patient. You can see more detail in my YouTube channel, so please scan QR code to check it out. The principle of ESD is to dis dissect it into some mucosal layer that we created by lifting solution, which I usually use the mixture of glycerol, adrenaline, and indicocamine. And so we dissection under the direct vision to remove polyps as on box resection in one piece. So the most important factor for the successful ESD procedure is the patient selection. JGES guideline for ESD EMI indicates selection criteria for ESD procedure is the lesion which endoscopic on box resection is required. Basically is the, the cancer the lesion that contain the cancer, we need to do the embark resection, so ESD should be performed. Or the lesion that have the submucosal fibrosis or the recurrence. Today, I will show you the three cases of the rectal lesion. Do you think all of these lesions need the surgery or just the endoscopic resection is adequate? Starting with the case number one, located in the upper rectum, this is the NBI and Unico come in. Our endoscopic diagnosis is the 01SP, 3.5 centimeters in size. From the NBI diagnosis is the nice type two, genet 2B lesion. And my diagnosis is the non-invasive malignant polyps. You can see the detail of the depressed area in the center of the lesion is the genet 2B. I decided to do the ESD for this lesion Starting with the lifting solution, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I usually use the dual knife to cut into the submucosal layer. The important is to get into the submucosal layer as soon as you can. And then for the ESD procedure, I use the taper cap to get the benefit to push into the distectant area. So the taper cap doing the open the space like the, here, you see, and then we dissecting, keep dissecting into the submucosal layer, the bluish layer that we created using the dual knife. So we cutting into the blue line and then the benefit from the taper cap. So it's the, like uh, open the space for, the, uh, for us to doing the dissection. If the, if the lifting is gone or is the, because it's used a uh, glycerol is sometimes it's born within the 20 minutes or something. So we do the keep injection. And uh, if we found some of the vessel, as you've seen in this video, we use the coagulase, the dual knife can stop the breathing. And we keep this section in the submicosal layer like this. And then the cap is doing like a one hand to open the space. And then when we can cut into the submucosal layer. In, the, in this lesion, they have the fibromuscular stalk. And so the muscular layer was tracted into the polyp. So we use the cap to open and then this section layer by layer of the muscle away from the lesion. Like you see in this video, I'm dissecting into the core stalk that the fibromuscular layer is attached to the lesion using the cap to open and dissection layer by layer of the muscle out from the lesion. So just keep the dissection line to the blue line and sometimes the bleeding occur, but we can stop it by using the head of the dual knife and keep cutting until you see the, the blue line, see here, and then the, open it by using the cap 
like this and then keep this section. So yeah, this is the fibromuscula is also away from the lesion. And then the, we keep this section to the, this is another part and then keep cutting and then to the backside of the polyps like this. In this lesion, the previous hospital doing the tattooing before, you will see after the, the complete excision like this. On the left side that you see the back mark is the after the, this is after the ESD was done. So this is the ESD procedure for the upper leg time. The operation time is the two hours and the pathologic study come back as a well differentiated adenocarcinoma, some microscope invasion, 50 micron without lymphovascular invasion, no budding and free margin. Additional CT chest and abdomen is no metastasis. So this lesion can safely and adequately removed by the ESD technique and the patient is uh, happy. And this is the follow-up seven months after the ESD procedure and then the, have the scaling in the center of the lesion is the, just the information and this will gone soon. So the case number two is located in the mid rectum. And this is the lateral spreading tumor, non canula type, flat elevated. Size is the three centimeters. Our NPI diagnosis is the nice type two and genet 2B lesion. The diagnosis is non invasive malignant polyps. But uh, in this lesion, you have to be careful because the lateral spreading tumor, especially the non canula flat elevated type, uh, have the chance to have the submicosal invasion, like in this lesion. So I decided to do the ESD for this lesion. And this is the dissecting of the using the ESD technique. And this is after the dissection. At the same manner that I explained to you in the video before. And this is specimen. Operation time is one hour. And pathologics come back at modulate differentiation, adenocarcinoma, submicosal invasion that 1087 micron without, no, sorry, with lymphovascular invasion, but no budding and free margin. Additional CT chest and abdomen is no metastasis. In this patient, I recommend them to get the additional surgery later after the ESD, but the patient is almost 90 years old with a lot of the comorbidity. So after the discussion with the patient and the relative, they decided not to do the additional surgery and then the the patient is the, just want to do the follow-up and then they still have app happy now. So the case number three is the located in the lower rectum. And as you can see in the, in the middle picture that the, the lesion is located close to the anal canal and then the almost half of this, more than half of the circumferential. So this is NBI. So my diagnosis is endoscopic diagnosis is lateral spreading tumor, granular type, nodular mixed type. The size is the largely seven centimeter. From NBI diagnosis is night type two, the genet 2A. So the diagnosis is tubulovilus adenoma without any part of the cancer. But in this lesion like this, it's very difficult to look at the, the detail because it's, the size is too big. But uh, yes, but uh, after the observation, I thought that this is just the tuberovilus adenoma. So I decided to do the ESD for this lesion. Start dissecting from the anal canal, as you see in the first picture. Uh, keep this section using the same manner of the ESD technique. And this is after the dissection, the more than half of the circumferential and then deep down to the anal canal. And the procedure time is the four hours. And pathologics come back as a tuberovilus adenoma with some part of the high grade dysplasia. Lymphovascular invasion is not seen and then it's a free margin. Additional CT chest and abdomen is no metastasis. And this is the follow up in Eggman of the Skywash Hill and without any stricture. So this patient will get the benefit from the ESD procedure, but because of if it decided to go on for the surgery, might be end up with the APR or something. 
So this is another case, and then uh, the ESE was done also, but this is the maybe the biggest of my case. The whole circumferential ESD was done, and then the, this is the after the healing. Uh, this is the other specimen and other cases that I do that some of them is really long time procedure, like eight hours or something. So yeah, this is the benefit from the from the ESD procedure. So if you found a lesion and you thought that the the ESD or the endoscopic treatment might be get the benefit for the patient, but you cannot do it. Just doing the photo, do not biopsy, do not do the tattooing, and send it to the endoscopic center that can do it. So for the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the power of nowadays technology of colonoscopy make we can get accurate characterization by details observation of colorectal polyps. Then removed by proper and safer procedure, including oncologic section for early colorectal cancer. Endoscopic stomach cell dissection ESD is safe and can be one of the options for treatment of early rectal cancer. If there are any parts of the lesion was suspected cancer, it should be resected by on broccoli section. And thank you for your listening. Thank you very much. Very excellent uh, lecture, Professor Sopakis, and fantastic video. Yes. Thank you so much. So we will move, we will have the question in, in the last session again. And so we will move to the next topic. The next topic is Tamis and Tem. Will present by Professor uh, Associate Professor Ramin Rensuwan. He is the Chief of the Corridor Surgery Unit Department of Surgery, Faculty of Medicine, Sirinad Hospital. So, Professor Ramin, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pawit. Uh, I would like to start and share my pre recorded video because the time is limited. Can you see the my video? Yes, we we, okay. we see it. Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank Mesa and the organizing committee, particularly Dr. Pavisutalat, for inviting me to join this online meeting. My name is Warren Millen Suwan from Corrector Surgery, Surgery Unit, Department of Surgery, Faculty of Medicine, Zilan Hospital. Mahidon University, Bangkok, Thailand. My talk today is Tamit and Tim. I have no disclosure. These are the topics I am going to present shortly, including local excision in rectal cancer. Next, we will talk about the conventional technique of local excision. Then we will move to Tim and Tamis. And finally, I will mention about some technical problem in TAMIS and how to solve the problem. As we all know that the principle of rectal cancer surgery are both removal of Usually, oncologic resection by TME should be implemented in clinically limb node positive and also in a highly T1 and T2 up to T4 rectal cancer because the chance of positive limb node are 10% in T1, 25% in T2, and even 50% in TT tumor. Local excision is one of acceptable treatments for early lower rectal cancer. For cumulative intent, it is used in T1 tumor with low risk feature, including submucosal invasion less than one millimeter or SM1, no angiolymphatic invasion, no perineural invasion, no budding tumor, and the margin is free. There are three approaches of conventional local excision have been described including tan anal excision approach, 
Tan Circle or Cascade Approach and Tan Swing Lake or York Mason Approach. The Tan Anal Excision is the most common local excision technique we use now a day in early rectal cancer. The tumor size should less than T centimeter and located in the lower rectum with, within X, X centimeter from the anal verge. The limitation of this approach is the tumor located proximally in the middle or upper rectum. In the past, the limitation of tan anal excision could be improved by either tan circle or tan swing -like approach. However, these two approaches have not been popularized because of their complications, such as wound dehiscence, rectal fissula, anal incontinence, and anal stenosis. I would like to mention a little bit about the technique of tan anal excision. For the excision pain, we can perform in three planes. First is the full thickness excision that we can go beyond the ESD pain performed by the endoscopist. Second, excision in the submucosal pain, same as the endoscopist performed ESD. And finally, partial thickness excision between the inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle layer, which recently came by some experts that this partial thickness excision is better than ESD because of gaining more deep margin. And when compared to full thickness excision, partial thickness excision doesn't damage to the TME plane and possibly making Salva TME easier. Regarding the culture of the defect of the wall, if the excision is performed in the submucosal pain, we can leave the wound open for secondary healing. In full thickness excision, it is recommended to close the defect with suturing either by interrupted or continuous stitch. Because if you leave the wound open, it takes quite a long time for secondary wound healing. And more patients have to suffer from anal pain and passing mucus body discharge for a few months. If the, the, the defect is small, you can coat it vertically. To avoid luminal narrowing in the large defect, it is better to close it in transverse or a horizontal fashion. As I mentioned before, the only limitation of tan anal excision is the lesion located in, in the middle or upper rectum. This limitation of tan anal excision was so by the advent of Taneno Endoscopic Microsurgery, or TEM, which was introduced by Clay Hatch Bush, a German surgeon in 1982. TEM can be used for performing either submucosal or full thickness excision in the lesion located at the middle or the posterior aspect of the upper rectum. This procedure was commonly used in Europe and UK, but slowly be adopted in US. The, the equipment is expensive and the procedure is difficult to perform and technically demanding because you have to do single post surgery in the limited space. At present, there are two platforms of TEM from two companies, one from Start Company called TEO and the other from Richard Wu Company. Both platforms compile up a four centimeter in diameter rigid lectoscope. The working space in the rectal lumen is created by insufflation of carbon dioxide at in laparoscopic surgery. During performing excision, the lesion by TEM, we have to look at the lesion in the face down manner. Therefore, we have to position the patient depending on the location of the lesion. If the lesion is at the posterior wall, we have to put the patient in a lithotomy position. If the lesion is at the anterior wall, we have to position the patient in a prone position. Why we position the patient in a lateral decubitus if the lesion is at the lateral wall? What is the difference between TEM and conventional tan anal excision? 
there has been a study from Minnesota group many years ago comparing between TEM and conventional tanino excision in early rectal cancer. This study demonstrated that the tumor excited by TEM was larger and located farther from the anal edge when compared to the tumor excited by tanino excision. When looking at the resection margin, there was less positive margin in TEM group when compared to the conventional tiny anal excision group. Let me show you a TEM case that we were consulted from the gastroenterologist many years ago. This patient has a two centimeter polyp at the middle rectum, 10 centimeter from the anal wash. The gastroenterologist removed it by polypectomy and pathology report was tubular adenoma with located space here. As you can see in this slide, I think there was some residual adenoma was left. One year later, this residual or recurrent adenoma was removed again with polypectomy by the gastroenterologist and the pathology report was tubulovilat adenoma with located space here. Six months after that, a a recurrent fat polyp which centrally displaced was detected. Biopsy was performed by the gastroenterologist and reported with large adenoma with high grade dysplasia. At that time, they consult us for surgery. We performed endorectal ultrasonography and found that the lesion was T0 N0 located at the posterior wall of the middle rectum. And you can see that it's what at the seminal vesicle level, which was quite difficult to remove by conventional tanino excision. We decided to perform full net local excision by TEM. Before passing the lectoscope, we usually dilate the anal canal with four finger. The electroscope was paired, then the cap with working and camera port was attached to the scope, then CO2 was insufflated. The resection margin was marked with quarterly, then full technique excision was performed with quarterly. Sometimes you might face with a large feeding vessel which could be cauterized. Then you can close the defect with 2O or TO absorbable suture. I think this is the most tedious part of the operation. Now, so they using a bad suture can facilitate you to close the defect easily. This was the specimen that we excite and the pathology reported tubular adenoma with focal high grade dysplasia. No space here at the lateral and deep margin. These were the finding of flexible sigmoidoscopy during one and three months after surgery. And this was the finding during flexible sigmoidoscopy at six months after surgery. You can see the nine healing scar. As I mentioned before, the limitation of using TEM in local excision for the rectal tumor is the, the expensive cost of the equipment. Until the last decade, in the era of single post surgery, the replacement of TEM by TAN anal minimally invasive surgery or TAM is what happened. This technique was first in introduced by a group from Minimally Invasive Surgery Center in Florida in 2010. They used the seal porch, which is a single port platform to paint in the anal canal and using standard laparoscopic surgery equipment to perform excision of the rectal lesion instead of TEM. 
recently published report by that group show a promising result in 200 patients with benign or malignant rectal tumor operated by TAMIS. In this study, the average positive margin rate was 7% and average 5% of fragmentation rate of the specimen was reported. At present, there are many single port surgery platform available in the market that we can use in TAMIS surgery. But the most popular platform actually designed for TAMIS is gelpoint pad. As we all know that the TAMIS platform is now also using for TAN anal TME. The TA TME was first proposed by Dr. Lacey in 2011. And this topic will be presented by Professor Ito and Dr. David in this meeting. This is, this is a study comparing the outcome of TEM versus TAMIS in local position for the rectal tumor. The tumor characteristic and tumor height from the ANOVERS were not different between two groups. The TAMIS group could have a small limb node and the excised specimen volume was bigger than the TEM group. However, the estimated but loss was higher in the TAMIS group. The complications and the recurrent rate were not different between two groups. Now, so they, you can also use the TAMIS platform and standard laparoscopic surgery equipment to perform local excision. If you don't have the TEM equipment, I think the time is, is more cost effectiveness. Regarding the technical problem during perform time is two obstacle that you have to deal with are smoke from rectal cautery and fapping of the rectal wall from CO2 insufflation. These two problem can cause the, in, the inadequate exposure of the lesion, and finally, making difficulty in dissection and surgery. Now, today you can overcome these two problems by using air seal system in surface to maintain a stable pneumorectum and facilitating smoke evacuation. But of course, the cost have to be increased. To collect the problem of fapping, fapping like the wall, the company launched the new generation of gel point pad, which include an insufflation stabilization bag to maintain a stable pneumorectum. You can try to use a cost effective technique to facilitate stable pneumorectum by using an inline golf at a laser wall, as in this report. If you don't have an SU system or insufflation stabilization bag, either active or passive smoke evacuator, as well as the quarterly probe with suction, can also be used to get rid of the problem of smoke during dissection with electroquarterly. If your budget is limited, you can also use a homemade go port with small size wound protector instead of a commercial TAMIS platform. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, local excision is acceptable for curative treatment in early rectal cancer with low risk histologic feature T1 N0 M0 lesion, preoperative clinical imaging for example, TAN rectal ultrasonography or MRI is very important in the decision for better local decision or on oncologic resection will be performed. Conventional tan anal excision is an appropriate in lower rectal lesion, particularly the lesion that's called to the anal and easily hooked by your finger during 
digital rectal examination. And finally, TEM and TAMIS are suitable techniques for the lesion in the middle rectum and posterior aspect of the upper rectum. I hope that we can meet in person face to face during our next MESDA meeting. Thank you for your attention and stay safe from COVID-19. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Romilius. Uh, your very nice lectures. Um, the next topic uh, will be a laparoscopic TME uh, by uh, Dr. Willapat. Uh, Dr. Willapat is a uh, very really talented in the field of colorectal surgery, especially for laparoscopic approach. Uh, Dr. Widapat is currently the attending surgeon of colorectal uh, depart, uh, department of surgery, faculty of medicine, Sinacrin Hospital. Please welcome Dr. Widapat. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we hear you. I would like to share my slide first. Do you see my slide? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Virapat Chatpanchachai from Sinaklin Hospital, Konkan University, Thailand. Today is my honor that Mesda have invited me to present in this valuable conference. And my topic today is about is will be about laparoscopic TME. We begin with the background and history. In 1908, William Ernest Maus proposed the abdominal perineal excision, or APE. In that time, most of the surgeons usually perform blunt dissection, which results in 25% positive resection margin. But in 1982, uh, everyone knows about this doctor. His name is RJ Bill Hill. He proposed the word TME, or total mesorectal excision. And the his invention has changed the paradigm and principle of rectal surgery. He used, he said we should use sharp mesorectal excision along direct vision, and we have to remove the rectum as the entire envelope. And here is the mesorectal fascia. It is the fascia that envelope around the rectum and the structure with lie inside, which include the mesorectal fats the lymph node and the lymphovascular structure. And how to understand the principle of the TME? First, you have to understand the anatomy of the mesorectum. And here is the uh, anatomy of the sagittal wheel of both female and male pelvis. And the uh, mesorectal fascia is lie in anterior, in female is lie between the rectum and vagina in rectal vaginal septum. And in male pelvis, it's lie between the seminal vesicle and prostate gland and anterior to rectum. And in posterior mesorectal fascia, both gender is lie just anterior to the presacral fascia. The mesorectal fascia is run, is run caudally and end in the level of the pelvic floor, which I label in the purple line. In the coronal view, the mesorectal fascia is run medially to the pelvic side wall and also run caudally to the level of the pelvic floor. And here I will talk about the uh, level of the rectal transaction. Uh, it's depending on the location of the tumors, means if the tumor is located in the middle or lower rectum, we should perform the complete total mesorectal excision means we have to move the entire mesorectal fascia down to the pelvic floor. And if the tumor is located higher, uh, like in the rectal sigmoid junction or in the upper rectum, we don't have to do the complete TME. We just have to transect and remove the specimen distal to the rectum for about four to five centimeters. That's called the AME or adequate mesorectal excision. And that is the tumor specific mesorectal excision. And this is the definition. 
And in the past, when we developed and uh, initiated uh, laparoscopic colorectal surgery, uh, most of the doctor and surgeon have concern about uh, its efficacy, whether it will be inadequate resection can, that can lead, lead to poorer long-term oncologic outcomes. Uh, maybe it will cause the post site recurrence and some have concern about the new techniques mean longer operative time and may lead to poorer, on poorer operative outcomes. And in the past, there is several landmark trials that try to prove the benefit and efficacy of laparoscopic versus an open, open approach in the colorectal surgery, beginning with the color trial in 2000 conducted in Netherlands, and is the study about uh, feasibility of laparoscopic versus open in colon cancer. Then in 2007, we have cost trial, and this study also tried to prove the efficacy of laparoscopic versus open approach in colon cancer. Then we have a classic trial in 2007 in United Kingdom. Then we have the color two trial in 2013. And this is the multi-center RCT about the efficacy of lapros laparoscopic versus open approach in rectal cancer. Then in 2014, we have Korean trial. And this study is about the study of uh, efficacy of laparoscopic versus open approach in locally advanced rectal cancer that underwent concurrent chemo radiotherapy. And all uh, five landmark trials, uh, some study is about colon, some study is about rectum, and some is uh, both colon and rectal surgery, but all study try to prove the efficacy and feasibility of laparoscopic versus open approach. And all of the study have shown that uh, laparoscopic is comparable and non-inferior to open approach in the term of oncologic outcomes. In 2015, we have one study that seems to be the problems. It called a COSOC Z6051 trial in Canada is the multi-center RCT in the patient is locally advanced rectal cancer that underwent CCRT. And this study tried to uh, prove that laparoscopic is not inferior to open approach in the term of distal resection margin, circumferential resection margin, and quality of the TME specimen. And the result, result of this study showed that the laparoscopic approach have more positive circumferential resection margin compared to open approach. When the result of this study come out, uh, all the laparoscopic surgeons have paused and doubt about the efficacy and feasibility and the dangerous about the laparoscopic rectal surgery. But if you look closely, the oncologic outcome in this, in this study is just the pathological oncologic outcome uh, in three parameters. When we follow up the patient in the Agosoc Z6051 for three years, and the long-term oncologic outcome come out, it showed that laparoscopic uh, is have equivalent local recurrence, and this is free survival to open approach. So the laparoscopic uh, surgery in locally advanced rectal cancer remain visible and safe. Nowadays, there, is a, there are several meta-analyses and systematic review about the efficacy of laparoscopic and open rectal surgery. And all of, all of it have concluded that laparoscopic is safe and efficacy and effective. And some parameter may be better than open approach, like the length of hospital stay and post-operative pain. And now uh, I will show you uh, the surgical step in laparoscopic TME from my, uh, I will show you the video from my real patient. First begin with the port side incision. I usually do the 12 millimeters camera port infra umbilicusly. And the surgeon port is located in the right lower quadrant area. The right hand is usually be 12 millimeters port 
because we can insert the endostapler and sometimes we can insert the intracorporeal suturing device through this port and the assistant port is located in the left lower quadrant side and the lower one uh, around here uh, will be the specimen removal port. We can extend this port to the uh, incision for about four centimeters to remove the specimen. And here I will divide the video into, into about five steps. Uh, we begin with the medial to lateral approach and access how to access to the TME plane. Okay, the assistant must be tracked the pedicle like this. And the incision, we begin by incise the peritoneum around the promontory of sacrum. And uh, if we do the correct plane, the carbon dioxide will inflate into the plane. We dissect cephalately and caudally. We dissect the peritoneum covering the IMA pedicle. And we encircle it and I usually uh, secure it with the plastic hemolock clip. And this uh, clip is uh, a little bit too big clip. And we divide it uh, between the hemolock. And then we dissect the IMV. We usually can transect it at the same level of the IMA. Then we transect it and we continue the medial dissection through the embryonic plane. We know that we have uh, adequate medial dissection when we see in the psoas muscle like this. And anatomy will be like this. I usually pack the gauze in the medial dissection that we have been performed to, and to do the easier lateral approach by see the gauze. The lateral approach, uh, we do separately as much as possible. And we do to the pelvis, lateral approach in the left side to the pelvis. In this is lateral dissection in the left side. And then we do the lateral dissection on the right side. The TME plane or the holy plane is the avascular plane that I dissect in this video. We can follow it to the level of the pelvic floor. Uh, I usually uh, do it in the posteri posterior side first. Uh, okay. Okay. And then uh, the next step is the anterior dissection. I divide it into two parts in, in male and in female. We begin with the male anterior dissection in male, dissecting the anterior peritoneal resection. In male, we have a seminal vesicle anteriorly. We dissect the peritoneal reflection anterior. In this case, I accidentally injury to the surface of the seminal vesicle, which is, uh, will be okay. And here is the seminal vesicle. We can follow the plane anterior to rectum and posterior to seminal vesicle down to the level of the pelvic floor. And the assistant is very important. In this case, the assistant must track seminal vesicle and I follow to the plane that I have show you. Okay, now the anterior dissection in, in female is quite different. Uh, let me stop here first. The uterine can be tracked anteriorly, either by using the suturing device or you, the, the assistant can be tracked is anteriorly. But in this case, I used a special device is the uterine elevator insert in vagina. And the peritoneal, anterior peritoneal reflection is this same, just like in male patient. But the different is anterior, that is the vagina, which is quite close to the rectum. It's slightly tight. Uh, sometimes you have to use sharp, and sometimes you have to use bundy section to identify the correct plane. And here is the boundary of the vagina and the rectum. Uh, I, in my opinion, 
the anterior dissection, the plane, the tissue plane in male anterior dissection is uh, looser or more loose than the female. But the overall dissection in rectal surgery in female is much easier than male because the female pelvis is wider and bigger. Now it's about the rectal transection. We divide into TME and AME. First, the TME, we transect the rectum to the level of the pelvic floor. Here you will see the pelvic floor. You have to transect uh, circumferentially before you divide the rectum. This, now you apply the stapler as close to pelvic floor as possible. Usually at this level, we have to use more than one staple cartridges. And this I use 60 millimeters and another 25. And here is the pelvic floor and the rectal stump. Then we perform the anastomosis. We have to ensure that the uh, staple line between first and second and, and maybe third staple line is in the good alignment in the same line. Now the rectal transaction in AME, as I mentioned before, if the tumor is slightly high, like this case is the tumor is located in the level of peritoneal refection, we can transect the rectum for about four to five centimeters, centimeter, this tall to the level of the tumor. We don't have to do the complete TME. Now this video shows the transect of the mesorectum. And then in this level, uh, is always used a uh, less number of staple cartridge because the rectum in this side is not wide. Okay. And uh, this is another important topic is uh, a, lot, a lot of study have shown that number of staple cartridge have related to anastomosis leakage. Like in the first uh, study, they show that uh, the staple cartridges more than three have caused the anastomosis leakage for about 20%. And in the second study that, that I have bring to show you, the, they show that number of staple cartridges more than three have led to leakage for about 26%. And this is the study of Dr. Masaki Ito. It's a very good study. Uh, you, he said that we usually insert the endostapler through the right lower quadrant port. And uh, through this alignment, we have to transect the rectum in a transferred fashion. And it will cause a more, more stable cartridge. But if we use the vertical rectal division by in, insert the stable cartridge, to, through the suprapubic port, we can uh, decrease the number of staple cartridges and it leads to uh, lower rates of anastomosis leakage. Uh, and uh, actually there is uh, several topics about the laparoscopic TME, but uh, I have only 20 minutes. So that's all I want to say. And uh, my conclusion is TME is the standard surgery in rectal cancer that unable to remove by local excision as the technique that uh, Dr. Supakit and Dr. Romin has mentioned before. And uh, the second conclusion that nowadays laparoscopic TME is safe and feasible. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. We passed for your very nice lecture. So we will move to the next topic. The next topic is about robotic TME. I will present by Professor Vitun Chinsawang, Matanakun. Professor Vitun is the chief of the division of female receive surgery at Suran Hospital. And he also the pioneer of robotic coronal surgery of Thailand. Today, he will give us uh, about the topics of uh, robotic TME. Please, Professor Vitoul. Thank you, Professor Bovit. Let me uh, 
share my slide first. Did you see my slide yet? Yes. Okay. I'd like to declare I have no conflict of interest. Uh, when we look at the robotic surgery, someone may say it's just a dream, but believe it or not, during this uh, COVID uh, uh, situation in Thailand, we still have at least two institutes that already installed a new uh, robotic machine during the uh, COVID uh, pandemics. And I heard from the company that perhaps next year, another two or three institutes may get the new uh, robotic uh, machine as well. So why uh, we have such a lot of famous technology like that? Uh, when we look at the robotic surgery platform, uh, someone may call it like a robot assisted laparoscopic surgery or else. It is one of the new challenging surgical technologies actually for a few decades. Uh, the most famous probably the Da Vinci surgical platform uh, was among the first few uh, technology uh, approved by the US FDA since 2000. And to date, the popularity of uh, robotic uh, assist surgery seemed to be increasing. Uh, if you look at the operation that uh, uh, FDA approved since 2000, uh, especially for the field of general surgery, it's covered a wide variety from cholecystectomy, anti refract procedure, gastectomy, esophagectomy, uh, actually colectomy, and other, nearly all organs inside the abdomen could be done uh, in uh, uh, whatever that by. Uh, uh, laparoscopic surgery, it could be done by robot as well. So when we look at the component of uh, Da Vinci surgical platform, it consists of five key elements. Uh, one is the economical design surgical console. Uh, you can select between one or two console. If you have to uh, teach, teach someone you want to do as a dual console. And the next one is a patient side card that gonna stick uh, uh, to the patients on the table. The third one is an interactive robot arms that could be moved uh, very, very uh, extensively with a wide range of motion. The fourth one is a three-dimensional high definition stereoscopic vision system that can see the operation with a very stable uh, platform camera. And the last one, and especially probably the, the most important, is the uh, endorisk uh, exclusive instruments. The endorisk uh, can uh, support the surgeon by giving the six degrees of freedom. You can move, as you can see on your own uh, 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 wrist, you can probably turn around uh, to third or uh, 270 degree around. But for the robotic system, you can turn around uh, one and a half turn or 520 degree and in a different direction as a six degree of freedom. So the WG platform could provide surgeons with a superior visualization, enhanced dexterity, a greater precision and ergonomic comfort when compared to the other uh, surgical approach, either open or laparoscopic surgery. So it makes a possibility uh, for a well-trained surgeon to perform uh, MIS procedure involving the complex dissection and reconstruction. So far, nearly uh, 20 years, I think uh, the Da Vinci platform has to run up to the fourth generation that call Da Vinci XIs. That could say that it's probably uh, suitable for general surgeon. When you see the stable camera on the left-hand side of the robot, it's very stable compared to the right hand side, even though uh, uh, you've got a very, the best uh, assistant, the uh, camera holder, just still got some shaking, uh, a, a bit of shaking that may uh, cause you a fatigue when you do the uh, operation for quite a long time. 
right? And the most important uh, 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 secret of the endolysis, you can gently manipulate the tissue uh, precisely because the tip of the, uh, the instrument you will see there is about one or two millimeter wide. So you can deep down and do very, very fine dissection. Right? So these all characteristics are considered to facilitate the significant steps of intra-abdominal operation, such as uh, dissection, control of blood vessels, mobilization of the bowel, and dissection into the deep pelvic cavity. That I would like to show uh, the example of the robot-assisted TME. Uh, basically, uh, I when I do laparoscopic surgery, I prefer to use the uh, harmonic scalpel rather than the uh, hook like this one. But uh, the harmonic scalpel in a uh, robotic platform is not flexible. It's not, uh, uh, you cannot flex uh, like uh, the six degree of freedom like the hook like this one. So I decided to use this side of simple dissection by cautery, right? as you can see. And I do not actually stick with either uh, entry, uh, a lateral to medial or medial to lateral approach. It depends on uh, which way is easier than another way. So you can see that this, uh, when I can identify the IMA, I try to dissect around, uh, get the, the lymph node out as much as possible. And I dissect the IMA with the a uh, 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 staple, vascular staple to make sure for hemostasis. And I prefer to use the top tap to assist for the tension and traction, especially when we have to uh, do surgery deep down into the heavy cavity like this one. And I just try to move around, you know, the mesocolon from the both side. And then as you can see, uh, as uh, uh, the previous uh, laparoscopic TME mentioned that the most difficult part probably at the anterior uh, side of the uh, rectum because sometimes the structure, especially for female like a, a vagina is going to be yeah, very close and very thin and this area, you may get injury to vagina very easily. And you look at the robot, uh, Visualization is very clear that you can see the plane sharply and you can dissect deep down, see, toward the pelvic cavity, uh, this one, right? And this is a, a similar vesicle that you can uh, avoid the injury to the seminal vesicle easily if you can see the three dimensional crispy here uh, uh, visualization like this. This uh, tumor is very, very low. So I need to help, let someone help us from the below to make sure uh, where is the edge of the tumor. And sometimes I use the hand assist to do the uh, anastomosis like this one, because I have to open up to remove the specimen anyway. Oh, sorry. Right. So when we look at the concerning issue, uh, of robot or laparoscopic rectal resection, especially for TME. We have to make sure that we get a good quality of TME excision sample. Uh, we have to uh, guarantee the oncological outcomes. If we can, we would like to preserve the nerve and urogenital function uh, uh, after surgery. Double time is one of the big issue that uh, the beginner of four robot may take more time when compared to laparoscopic TME. And post-operative short and long-term outcome have to be uh, compared between uh, laparoscopic and robotic surgery. And finally, the cost. Uh, at the moment, it's for sure that the cost of the robot is about uh, two or three times over laparoscopic and uh, open uh, surgery. 
When we look at the uh, evidence-based uh, study in the literature, uh, when compared to conventional laparoscopy, the robot uh, TME associated with a significant fewer conversion rate that you have to uh, uh, take more time to get that benefit as well. The robot TME is useful for the saving operation achievement. It has been uh, clear in many literature. And the robot TME for rectal cancer seem to be associated with the early recovery of normal voiding and sexual function compared to patients who underwent a conventional uh, laparoscopic TME. This has been uh, demonstrated in many uh, papers uh, similar to the uh, successful of robot uh, prostatectomy in the uh, uh, urology. And robotic surgery for rectal cancer also satisfy the all measure of pathological adequacy of TME or AME in some case, uh, and also uh, offer the acceptable oncological outcomes. The robot uh, resection provide a better post-operative short-term outcome. For example, uh, they provide a less but loss short-term post-operative hospital stay, lower rate of urine retention, a lower rate of post-operative complications such as uh, uh, cellulosic infection or less anastomotic leakage as well. The robot TME provides a similar post-operative long-term outcome, either the lab or open surgery. Uh, when we look at the three to five years survival outcome, and uh, local recurrence among uh, open laparoscopic and robot assisted me in uh, recent uh, literature. Uh, this is uh, one of the most uh, expected uh, randomized uh, control for uh, robotic compared to the conventional and open uh, surgery. It's called the RORA uh, trial. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the results uh, that have been published in 2017 in China seem not to be uh, 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 happy as we expected. Uh, this uh, trial actually spent over six, seven years, and it started uh, at the beginning of the, the robot uh, rectal reception. <clears throat> this is also the International Multi Center uh, prospective trial in about 70. Uh, 470 uh, cases from 29 centers in 10 countries. That uh, too many uh, places that may cause the result might not be satisfied. For example, they do not uh, demonstrate any significant difference between lab and uh, robot in terms of conventional uh, conversion rate, uh, CIM positivity, TME completion, the rate of interoperative complication, the mortality, and other uh, post-operative complications. Anyhow, in some subgroup analysis, they found that uh, uh, robot, robotic surgery in uh, TME uh, may uh, uh, decrease the conversion rate uh, when compared to the lab in men, especially for the fatty male with a narrow male pelvis. So I think the limitation of uh, the rural trial probably come from too many surgeons with different uh, robotic experience because the median experience is about only 50 robotic cases uh, vary from 30 to 100 uh, in, in interquartile range. So that may cause no significant benefit uh, when we analyze uh, the whole data. Uh, I think in the future study uh, of similar design might be uh, uh, get involved more experienced surgeon. Uh, so we may get the uh, good news in the future. When we look at the, uh, how famous that the robot have been done globally, uh, you can see in this slide that uh, when, since the launching of WinGi XI or the fourth generation that could uh, make uh, the operation easier because it's a four-quadrant approach. You can swap between uh, 
uh, camera and the uh, arms, any arms, because uh, they use the same size of the port, of the eight millimeter port, better than uh, 12 plus the other three uh, eight uh, millimeter port in the previous generation. And <clears throat> you can see since uh, 2017, it seemed that uh, the general surgery uh, operation seemed to be overcome the total case of the robotic uh, surgery have been done by uh, gynecology and urology. Uh, the, in the United States, they uh, install, I think, over 2,000 uh, robot machines that may uh, benefit to a uh, general surgeon to get wide range of operations such as uh, colectomy, like this, uh, uh, as I showed you before, and also even the simple colecto uh, cholecystectomy or hernia operation. And you can see here, since uh, 2014, with the uh, WGXI, it seemed that the colorectal operation is going to be famous more and more. Uh, and this is the evidence that showed that uh, one in two colorectal surgeons, that means 50%, are uh, using Da Vinci system in the US. And about 83% uh, uh, of 2000, uh, 2017, 2018 correctal fellows were trained on Da Vinci system. That's gonna be the future surgeon uh, for the uh, robot army. And average correctal fellows complete uh, up to 25 Da Vinci uh, cases during their training. It seems to be uh, that in the future, the robot uh, surgery may occupy uh, instead of the conventional uh, laparoscopic surgery. So let me show our experience of Da Vinci platform in Sirat Hospital. We start since 2007. Uh, it's over uh, 10, uh, <clears throat> 13, 14 years. Uh, for the first five, Yes, uh, it's very slow, uh, increasing in number. In 2017, you can see that we got more and more uh, uh, surgeons uh, interested to do uh, robotic surgery. So in general surgery, they uh, like uh, climbing up uh, a trend. So far, we have done nearly five, approaching 500 cases in the over 20 procedure from top to toe, I can say that, from esophagectomy, nisenton lubrication, gastectomy, uh, hepatobiliary surgery, even a ripper operation, and also for correctal surgery, uh, varying from the sigmoidectomy to uh, low anterior section, TME, or even uh, APR. And uh, at the moment, we got a new champion, uh, Dr. Warabut, he's gonna be done on a lot more bariatric surgery. For the last few years, uh, he performed over 70 cases. I think it's an uh, approach 100 cases pretty soon. And also the lab uh, <clears throat> uh, hernia using the tap technique to do robotic surgery as well. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the robotic surgery, especially for critical surgery, is still at the early stage and may need more evidence-based support. The current studies regarding the use of uh, robotic assist uh, laparoscopic surgery in GI cancer reported ancestral, ancestral consensus yet. The development of surgical techniques with the latest model of WGXI, XI, as well as other future platforms may encourage the robot surgery more applicable for colorectal surgeons in the near future. So many studies demonstrated the feasibility and benefits tendency anyway, and the cost benefit uh, need to be carefully judged. Uh, in conclusion, I do believe that the robotic TME is future for colorectal surgeons. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Vitun, for your excellent lecture. So we will move to the next topic. Yeah.
The next topic will be uh, laparoscopic ISR by Professor Bun Chai. Uh, Professor Bun Chai is uh, one of our famous colorectal surgeon in Thailand. Now he is currently is a lecturer and colorectal surgeon from the Department of Surgery, Faculty of Medicine, Wachira Hospital. Please welcome Dr. Uh, Professor Bun Chai. Dr. Joe, thank you, Dr. Joe, for your the introduction. You can see my slide? Yes, yes, we see. Okay. Okay, I will to start off my slide. Doctor Joe, can you see off my slide again? Yes. Uh but uh, can you show in a uh, presentation view? This is uh, okay. not a presentation view. Okay. I will. อาจารย์อาจารย์น่าจะกดตรงการนําเสนอภาพนิ่งนะครับแล้วก็แล้วก็กดไอ้นําเสนอครับ ตั้งแต่ตั้งแต่ต้นนะครับอาจารย์ตรงตรงตั้งแต่ต้นตรงนั้นนะฮะน่าจะน่าจะอย่างนี้ครับ อาจารย์คลิกตรงคําว่าตั้งแต่ต้นตรงเอบาร์ข้างบนเลยก็ได้ครับตรงนั้นเดี๋ยวมันจะโชว์ตั้งแต่ภาพแรกเลยครับครับ
Chao Phya River, the main river in the center of the Bangkok. And though this culture for this topic, this is my aura today. It is the web definition of the background of ISR, the conflict issue, the result and quality of life of the ISR, and my step of the laparoscopy ISR with my practice. Before I go to the next slide, I will to talk about the surgical decision making. I think that when we fed up the low lying of the rectal cancer, the decision is the depend on the four topic about the oncologic outcome, quality of life, surgical experience, and the pattern of prefer. That I think that we will to balance of the four topic to give the pattern to the good option. For the definition and the background, ISR is the procedure designed to the preserve of the anal function for the very low rectum cancer. I mean that the five centimeter from the anal birth and three centimeter from the dentate line. The ISR has the first uh, pronounced report by the Professor Chisel in the 1994 in the open technique. After that, for the five years ago, the Professor Watanabe and his colleague has the report of the laparoscopic ISR in the 2000. This is the original paper of the intersmetallic resection for the raw rectum tumor. And the uh, uh, laparoscopic ISR is a report by the Professor Watanabe. For the definition, uh, we will do classification of the ISR into the three group uh, to the level of the incision. At the dentate line is so the partial ISR and in the inner words is the total ISR and between it is the subtotal. On the picture on the left side, you will see of the picture of the tumor location. I think that the type two the tumor location is uh, suitable for the ISR. And you be careful for the type four that have the invade of the spinter as uh, some surgeon uh, do the partial external spinter resection. I think that is not harmful. For the indication for the lower line in jacta anal rectum cancer, five centimeter from the in over and three centimeter from the dentate line. The depth of the tumor is the T1 or T2 and the select T3. I think that the T4 is not suitable for the ISR and you will to have the B evaluate of the anal function. For the world original right for the ISR is the morbid mortality. The mortality is less than five centimeter and the morbidity is less than 30% and anatomocyte leakage is less than 10%. And the most uh, post operative complication is the anal structure less than 16%. And uh, most of the pelvic infection is 11%. From the meta analysis of the part uh, that he collects, uh, meta analysis from the modern tensile of the ISR. He have the collection of the data overall surgical morbidity is less than 30% and the small of the mortality. Most complication is the uh, pelvic abscess and the anal structure. But except you will see the except of the early period of the ISR from the coral paper, it have anatomy leakage so high. For the issue of the laparoscopic or the open technique, uh, uh, we have the meta-analysis from the professor Chen as his query to compare about the laparo and the open technique by five study. He found that the morbid mortality is the front up to uh, less in the laparoscopic anatomy leakage is similar to the both sides. 
hospital time, it is uh, uh, laparoscopic, it's better. For the operative time, it's less in the open technique. For the blood loss, it favor to the laparoscopic technique. For the circumferential rectal margin and the distal rectal margin, it uh, similar for the both side. And the number of the lymph node harvest is the better in the laparoscopic. For the oncologic outcome about the disease free survival and the overall survival until the local recurrent rate, it is seem to similar in the both side. Uh, Professor Chen and his colleague had the conclusion the laparoscopic is compared to the open technique. For the in general, for the oncologic outcome of the ISR, it is the local recurrent less than the 30%. And no differ from the APR, from the CD of the cyto and the CORI. The local recurrent only the 5% for the ISR, and five year disease survival is the 69% for the ISR, and 73% uh, for the APR is not different. For the issue of the digital rectal margin, uh, in general, we know that uh, the Local recurrent water impact by the circumferential rectal margin than the distal rectal margin. We have many papers to support it. And one of the silly is from the Professor Jim Lam. He said that in Tamulo, extension beyond the cross tumor is generally less than one centimeter. Uh, for the Retrospective analysis of the Professor Philip Menko from the German, he has the, to find the minimal distal rectal uh, resection margin in the low rectal cancer. He collect the data about the 88% 88 per, who has a uh, rectal cancer and divide to the two groups. In the one group, if the distal rectal margin is less than one centimeter and the other is more than one centimeter. He collect the data about the five year overall survival, it is the same. That's uh, 93 and 95%. The same as the local recurrent free survival, that is the 92 or 93%. It is similar from the margin uh, one centimeter. That's the main goal is uh, conclusion, the one centimeter of the distal rectal margin is enough. We have many paper about the distal rectal margin for over more than 10 years, but we have some the conflict of the distal, distal rectal margin. I have to show you about the paper of the Professor Hayden that he said that about the tumor scattering after the neoadjuvant therapy for rectal cancer. He said that after the radiation, the God also cannot be used to determine residual tumor. He find that the residual tumor will be found up to the three centimeters from the distal cross ulcer. He said that the standard two centimeter margin is not enough. But in the final re, we found that the, the, this parameter was not associated with the poor prognosis factor and the oncologic outcome. For the issue of the quality of life, functional outcome for the ISR is the main problem. And uh, in the other of the low lying anatomosis, the pattern will come to visit me, visit us with the urgent defecation, incontinent evacuation disorder, and in case to prevention. Because of multifactorial factor, the direct trauma of uh, internal splinter is the one, and interruption of the reflex compliance and the physiologic property of the neorectum differ than normal. 
for the some case of the part of the radiation therapy before it will be impact of the anal function and anal splinter. This is a metallurgist from the past. He will see to uh, the quality of light from the many paper. You will see that the after the ISR for many paper, the bow motion per day is the two or three times per day, and the continent good continent is more than even sixty uh, percent. And the major incontinent is less than uh, 10%. For the type of anatomy in the PAU or non PAU, we learned that the PAU and non PAU is similar quality of life. Now, then we know that the colony PAU has a short term advantage that are by exception, but it's a long term benefit had a little bit benefit. It is my step and my technique. We, I have in my practice, I have to do pull part for the do ISR, interabdominal part and the perineum part. I think that interabdominal part, uh, same like the Dr. Vitun and Dr. Vilabad in the Lapalo TME. So my step is the ligation of an IMA median to the retinal and the mobilize the rectum to the floor of pelvis. That's uh, when you do ISR, you will clearly to identify of the pelvic floor. In the picture, you will see in the picture on the right side, you will see the high tower recommend that the insert of the coccyx and the anal canal. You will cut it to mobilize freely of the rectum and you will see the lining muscle of the pubic coccygeal and pubic rectal wrist. And you will turn to the perineum part. I'm almost always to use the road star to expose of my anal canal. And I will do the marking of the circumferential incision at the dentate line from the partial ISR. Before to, I dissect along the interspinal pain, I will to close of the rectal, distal rectal stem to prevent of the tumor uh, seating. And I will to free up the draw direction. After I free up the rectum, I will to retrieve the specimen trans anal root and anatomy with my manual anatomy search by the YQTO. You will see, you will see have the anterior dissection. You will to be careful about meticulous to do it because of if you do the long pain, you will see in the picture on the prostate and neurovascular button that locate on the 11 o'clock and the two o'clock that you have a, a dissection in the long pain, you will have the, some bleeding. This is of my the short video that I will do ISR in the last month. I will show you.
Okay, this is all my the last slide. I conclude can. The ISR is the safe procedure for the splinter preserve wing surgery compared to uh, abdominal peridium resection. However, the select case should be considered the adverse function effect should be preoperative, evaluated. And I think that the laparoscopic ISR have the safety and insufficiency for the select case in the post-operative pain and hospital time. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bun Chai. We will keep the uh, question for the for the last uh, topic. The next topic will be uh, what should we know about TATME by Associate Professor Pawit Sutharat. Professor Pawit is a uh, uh, top rank of the TATME in Thailand, and he is a uh, very well known of a uh, colorectal surgery, especially for minimally invasive approach. Now he currently is a chief of division of colorectal uh, department of surgery, faculty of medicine, Chiang Mai University. Please welcome uh, Professor Pawit. Thank, thank you very much, Professor Tapon, for your uh, introduction. So, did you see my slides now? Yes. Yes. Professor, yes. Okay. Okay. We start. Uh, today my today my uh, sorry today my topic is about uh, what should we know about TATMEs. So the first slide shows about the uh, the timings of the rectal cancer surgeries. See first from the mice and Professor Hill in the 1979s, such a hop, the laparoscopic surgery in 1990, then 1995, <clears throat> 19, uh, anesthetic surgeries, and also robotic surgery. And the TATME was performed the first case in the year 2009 by Professor Andrew Lacey and Professor Patricia Silla together and then the robotic airlines. And uh, from the year 2019, is a 10 year anniversary of uh, TATMEs. This is uh, all key persons for TATME, Professor Hugh, Professor Silla, and Professor Lacey, and Cecil. Cecil, Cecil Lacey used the name of Cecil to give his uh, approach, the Cecil approach. First, we need to know about the TME is the indications uh, from the Senkalen consensus. They show that uh, indication for patients who perform TME is uh, for narrow pelvis, obesity, above mid and distal rectal tumors, AP resections. You can use an AP resection or ISR or another benign procedure. But now, after we listen, uh, Professor Ito, Speak, uh, speak about today. I think this is the indication we share in the future is that to advance cares for the example of a lot of pelvic node dissection for prostatectomy, cystectomy, and uh, recurrent tumor, and also GIS. So, this is uh, um, one of my teacher, Professor Ito. We visit uh, his uh, hospital about two years ago to learn about TATV with him. So I think now we know that uh, he changed the indication for TATV to use in our case with the middle and rectal cancer and also the indication will develop now. The TATV has uh, two ties. The first tie is uh, used for use for a tumor that location about five to six centimeters from the inner wash. We need to why six centimeter? Because the length of the prosthesis that we use, the, uh, the trilateral platform is length is about 5.5 centimeter. First, we insert the prosthesis and then bursting suture and then dissections. This is the, the first type of the TATME. We know about the trilateral platform that we all 
always use the jail bypass, but now I have three generation. As Professor Ramin talked before, the first generation is uh, the second generation and the third generation come with the insufflation stabilization back. The second type of the TADME is uh, used for the patient that uh, need to perform the interstitial dissection first, and then you can dissect upward about four to five centimeters and then apply the gel bypass pressments and then dissections. Start with the ISR first and then apply the trinal platform and then go to dissections. This is a instrument that we use. The abdominal team use the instrument as perform conventional laparoscopy. But for trinals, uh, we recommend the zero degree of the 3D camera to use because you can adjust the depth when you perform the laparoscopic surgeries. Use the lone star retractor, gel point pass, and the instrument is used or you can use hook or spatula ties. We need SEO system, but if you don't, you don't have the SEO system, you can use the, uh, the gel point platform with the insufflation stabilization bags. And when to perform an atomosis, you can use stepper hemodectomy, circular stepper, or depend on the technique that you prefer. And this is one of the very useful instrument is a uh, high Q suction irrigations. When you perform trinanol, sometimes have some uh, breathings, but this instrument from uh, Olympus can help you very much. You can suction irrigation and also the cauterization at the tip. It's very useful. The LCO system is will maintain the pelvis for you when you perform the surgeries. Or uh, if you do not have the LCO system, you can use the third generation with the insufflation stabilization bags, or you can apply by yourself use uh, the glove. Okay. This is the positions when perform the surgeries. There are two teams. Uh, trying abdominal team have three surgeons and the trinal team have two surgeons. The abdominal pass, the pot press men as usual when you perform the conventional laparoscopic surgeries. And this is a trinanal <coughs> process. Apply the device introduction, marking with cauterizations, and then bursting suture. Maybe above, above the marking of, uh, of the line of marking about uh, one centimeter. And the marking is about two centimeters from, from the lower border of the tumor. Then start rectotomy full thickness circumference series, and then anatomosis. The device introduction, so many, many styles of the trocar placement in the gel point pass, lazy, Professor Lacey's, how they use camera below, and working part is here, and he sit together with the cameraman. Professor Ito used camera part here, at uh, working channel is below, and the cameraman sit. Uh, cameraman will stand stand outside the view between the between the leg of the patients. And this is another style that you can use. Okay, many style depend on your preference. And I use I always use like professor. Ito and also sometimes I use like this one, sit together with the camera man. This is Professor Ito will sit here and camera man will stand here and control the camera and also control the jail point part up and down when perform the surgery. From the previous international registry report, 
uh, this is the famous uh, paper in the year 2016 report from 720 cases. There are 20 cases that have a conversion about the ATP to 0.8%. And there are four cases which report failure the first thing and also leakage require a repeat pressing suture again. The excessive smoking of care about 21.9%. The difficulty maintaining the stable pneumonia risk is 15%. The incorrect pain is 7.8%. Pelvic breathing is about 7%. Visual organ injury, for example, urethral injuries, also show bladder injury, hypogastric nerve injury, and also rectal tube perforations. The first step that we need to know when we perform TATME is the to make a pressing suture is a very important step. The first step of the pressing will form is a uh, submucosal line of the pressing suture. In this video, we will push the gauze below the tumors and then marking, use the cauterization to marking that we will start a section from here and we will perform the pressing suture above these markings, the markings, you can adjust the distal margins of the tumor. This makes the submucosal dissection. We recommend 3D endoscope because you can, you can easy to perform the first thing. This case, I use the needle poly number two zeros. The length of the curve of the needle is 26 millimeter. And different from the the right size video, the needle is length is uh, 70 millimeters. This one is sometimes difficult if the pelvis is uh, a little bit tight, but you do not need to do much for this. But this one, you can move the needle easily, but uh, need to perform more stitch of the first thing. Take a little bit more time than the left side videos. So, so now you can do single or double first thing. But uh, now I think it's to be safe to use the double first thing because it's, you can secure the tumor cell spillage more than one of the first thing sutures. And another is about uh, the incorrect brains and the complications. The brain, as Professor Ito showed you, that the, we need to know about anatomy of the pelvis from below. In male, anterior has prostate and pre-prosthetic urethals. The neurovascular bundle is located at the 10 and 2 o'clock and another outsized pelvic organs. The same in the female, but in anterior, you need to have worry about the posterior wall of the vagina, but another is the same. This is a organ that's cross prone to be injury when you perform the TATME. In males, anterior, you need to careful about the hypothetic urethra, prostate, neurovascular bundle, and the posterior is pre vessel. And the lateral is the internal and external in that vessel. If you go to the, to the long planes, outside is maybe injury, there are some report about the injury of the iliac vessels and the female in the anterior wall is vagina, posterior wall vagina. This we all chose the upper show the dissection in male. We have to need to know about the warning signs that uh, will be postponed to be injury to the urethra. If you dissect in the anterior and you see some breathing, you so see some frappy pest or striated muscle, that's maybe he go to the wrong brain. You see well here, this is the vessels. And if you dissect and see some breathing, keep in mind is maybe go to the wrong brains or incorrect brains. 
and check again this is a prostate scan and we need to dissect here this is a prostate scan we need to dissect around here this is the correct brains why we easy to injury when we perform the injury pass because the positions of the patient will head down and you will be go to the incorrect planes easily in the anterior path. But in female, in female is, I think it's to be easy to identify the, the planes than male because you can check by per vaginal examination when you perform in the anterior part. This is a posterior one. You see, per vaginal examination can check, and you can go to the correct plane. Okay, there's some report. This is report from Professor Sam Atala. That's uh, in this case, go to the incorrect plane in the anterior part here. The surgeon used. Use the cauterized system here. Let's go two more anteriors that will expose the picture like this. This is a very beautiful picture. And if you've seen picture like this, when the tube structure here and the vessel here is, I mean, you you keep in mind that we go to the wrong brain. This one is a pre-prosthetic ureter. The session did not know this is anatomies and use the instrument to cut it. And this here, and this one, the prostate can here, the same picture. And if cut it, you will see in the ureteric catheter inside and this is very uh, serious complication because this is happen you will you will call your vet urologist friends to help you it's very difficult to to manage at this part if it have in injury okay i will pass this video okay then when we perform the cadaveric workshop we need to go to to the outside plane, like this one, to identify. This is the view from Cadillac workshop with Professor Ito. Seeing the, the prostate can here and the pre prostatic returns. This is liberator and eye muscle. In the entry pass, if you cut the endopelvic patch here, you will see the liberator and eye muscles. Okay. And please keep in mind that uh, TA, TME, TA. TME AP resection is more difficult than TA TME ISA and also more difficult than TA TME conventional. And for the large law, <clears throat> please keep in mind that the 10 o'clock you will be exposed to the neurovascular abandon. And if you have breathing, please carefully track the rectal tube to another size and carefully dissection here. Use the cutting, the same at the left side of the patient. Okay. And sometimes in this view from abdominal part, the reading was report in TATME case about 6.9% from 720 cases means about 50 cases have the pelvic breathings like this. Okay. Professor Hill show from this video that uh, the surgeons dissect into the, the long brains. This is the endopelvic patch here. If you go under the endopelvic fascia, you will see in the pre-sarcovinate plexus and maybe cause injury. 
And but in some time we need to go in this plane that, for example, the case that have the T3 relation, I think we need to go outside the endoplasmic fascia. And in this case, he go to drop the endoplasmic fascia below and then go to the correct planes. And if you have some uh, breathing when perform TATME, uh, you can increase the pneumopel width till 20 millimeter mercury, but it's, it's carefully about CO2 embolisms. And in this situation, you can use the bipolar system to stop the breathing. Next, I will talk about uh, anastomosis technique in TATMEs. There are two types. One is the Hansel Poenos. Another one is use the stepper that divide use the stepper hemorrhoidectomy or conventional stepper that divide into technique abdominal double thrusting or trinenal double thrusting technique. Hemorrhoid stepper and conventional stepper. Hemorrhoid has a little bit size. He's carefully when used. This one is maybe easy to injury to surrounding or gap. Very sure you will video. Uh, form report allow about anatomosis in the uh, lab TME and TATME. In lab TME, we know that it's a double separate techniques. And for TATME, it's a single separate techniques. It should be half low rate of the leakage, but from literature report show that uh, very high, some report from five to 25. This is only, only four case, but we cannot tell this one. But uh, from the, pi the pioneer, Professor Ito show the leakage rate is about 1.8%. One, 1. One point and Professor Lacey show about 8.6% in his report. And in this literature show the leakage rate is about 6.7%. That early show in the early and about 5.4% and delay is about 1.3%. From the big study, about 1,594 cases show the leakage is also high too, is about 9.8%. And the total overall anastomosis failure is about 15.7%. So we recommend to perform the ICG with fluorescent endoscope in our case before perform anatomosis. This can reduce the leakage rate from report of the pillar tri -tools. So, Another technique, another first thing that's very important is before anatomosis. You need to perform all of the first string suture here. This is a rectal cup. This all of the first string suture. Okay, I will pass to this another video. In another case, I use also use poly number two zeros. And in this video, you can use or call your partner from the abdominal part to check you that is you make a good first things all right or not. You see the camera from above to check you again. This is uh, the first type of anatomosis is a uh, hand to colloidal anatomosis. That's the same technique as the, you perform conventional ISR or laparoscopic ISR. ICG first, and then you will see the cut, the cut line here, and then pass the bowel through the anus and check again. And the ML team will check that your bowel is not to risk and then perform an atomosis. And after completing social here, then check again with the ICG, the three steps to check of the ICG in this case. 
And then after, in this case, I use uh, embroidered slipper. It's a little bit big. Please carefully when you use this because it's easy to injury to surrounding or cat. In this case, I perform busting directly, not, not use the laparoscopic, just use the camera inside here. This is a distal bust ring. And then, because the proximal colon here and make a bursting suture again here. And then use the end view to apprise. This is the long shaft of the end view. Okay. After that, you can push this one into the platform here and then tie the bus strings. Then you can apply the circular stapler here inside. It's a little bit bigger than the embroidered stepper, but, but uh, you can remove this one first and then perform this one, or you can do like this one. Okay. And after that, check with the ICG again to check that uh, your anatomosis is good but supply or not. Okay. And this is uh, that. Now that I always use this technique by Professor Ito to perform the anatomosis. This is called transabdominal double bursting suture techniques. That's suitable for long stem of the rectal cup here. After completely bursting suture, Use the solatic tools number nine or number 10 to insert in the middle part and tie the first things. And then use it to guide the circular stepper into the anus. And your team from the abdominal part will remove and guide you to put in the to the middle. And then remove and then perform anatomosis like your conventional laparoscopic technique. Check your bow again does not twist. And after copyright anatomosis, you will check again with the ICGs. Okay. And the last tie of the anatomosis is for a little bit short of the top cup here. Make a bursting suture and then the abdominal team will pass you the thoracic tube and in view and also proximal bowel here. And you graft the in view, the tip, uh, the, the chaff of the in view here and then tie the bus string and then apply the circular stapler. There are two tie of the uh, another most it hands so at stapler, but stapler we will divide in three. And the last after completely another most it we recommend to reinforce sutures PDS number four zeros, about 16 stitch here. Right, 
technique of Professor Masaki Uto. We also learn from him that it's maybe use, very useful to make sure that your natural sleep pure will be good. Okay, I will pass this video. And from the same uh, report from the Norwegian study, it's very, uh, very uh, rapid recurrence in that case. And also the pattern of recurrence will very uncommon. Uh, lateral compartment of pelvic recurrence. And if you see in the papers, seven of case of the recurrence intraoperative rectal perforation, that's maybe cause, that's maybe cause of the tumor recurrence here. Yeah, this and I told you that's the first thing, which is very important in the first step. If the first thing is not good, when perform some, if you have some theory from here, when you use the ASU, the flow of the ASU will push the tumor cell to the lateral. That is maybe cause of the recurrence to the lateral pelvic side wall. Okay, very interesting for my conclusions. So I think uh, what should we know about the ATME? That's first the indications, anatomies, and the technique and complication and management you need to learn. This one. And this uh, my select case now today's. Uh, if the patient have a to be a difficult case, I I will select TATME first for middle and lower of cancer. But uh, you, if you do not have the team to team for TATME, you can try the uh, conventional lab first. Or uh, in not difficult case, you can you can try TATME if you have two team. But if you do not have, you can perform with conventional lab. Okay. And the near future, I think the robotic TME, TATME will have role in this situation. You know, the WGSP was approved by FAA in the year 2019. It's very useful to try to perform the TATME in the future. And also many reports in cadaveric models. And I think robotic the WGSP will be have a role in the TAP in the future. And you will see in some uh, light demonstration with the robotic plus TATME or in the future robotic plus robotic WGSP together, two robotic in one case. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Okay, we go to the next topics about the rapnoscopic APEs by Dr. Sri Pong from Songkhla Hospitals, print of Songkhla USD, Utah. He's a chief of the minimum receipt surgery unit of print of Songkhla USD. Everybody, please welcome Professor Sri Pong, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So do you hear me? Dr. Babit, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Vitoon and Dr. Babit and all of Mr. Committee to let me have the opportunity to be here today and say hi to our Japanese friend, uh, Professor Kitano and Professor Ito. And congratulations you are, to your uh, the new robot, the new platform, the robot. So I hope to see all of us soon, as soon as possible after the COVID resolve. So my topic today is uh, about the laparoscopic uh, abdominal perineal resection. So I will, I will be brief and concentrate on the, some potential hazards and some technical issue during surgery 
So as we we'll ask the strategy to avoid the honing down specimen, which can result in the perforation of and poor outcome. Okay, so my slides, uh, usually uh, I have no financial disclosure or conflict. So we now, we now have many options for treating the distal rectal cancer, like you see here. So many of speaker uh, today, we, we heard a lot of TA, TME, uh, lab ISR, the beautiful outer low anterior, but we still have a tumor that has spread to the sphincter and we were unable to perform the sphincter saving procedure. So that's why the AP resection is still uh, needed to learn. Okay. So back into the 10 year later, there have been numerous publication in last, I think about, I think about 10 years, describing about the poor outcomes of the conventional AP resection. So this concern raised the question of the procedure that benefit from the radical resection. So when compared to the low anterior resection or anterior resection, the outcome of the AP resection is poorer. This caused the AP technical to be revisited. And the concept of the extra elevator or cylindrical AP resection then emerging. So at that time, this concept of extra elevator spread to the community of the colorectal surgeon. But now it's 10 years later, in reality, I think uh, nothing is particularly novel now. If we understand the anatomy and the particularly on the tapering of the mesorectal in the relation with the pelvic floor. So the idea is, I think, simple as the on block resection. Okay, so why do we need the extra elevator APE? The reason for, for this maneuver is that uh, the, pub, the most of the publication mentioned of the majority of the poor results were caused by the inadvertent interoperative bar perforation or lack of concern about the tech, the, the, the surgical technique. So the question is that what is the cause of a higher positive margin in this more or this aggressive surgery? So the answer I think should be uh, answered through the specimen or through the perspective of the anatomy. So we, when we look looking back to the anatomy, this can help us answer this question. So we begin with the specimen examinations. So rectal cancer certainly as, as we all know, I think it is a highly technical demanding procedure and the specimen can tell us about the surgical quality. So what is so different between uh, the left side and the right side specimen? They both have a very nice plane of TME and very nice plane of the posterior margin or circumferential margin. Except the left side, the picture in the left side has the, the, the waist or the coding down fashion. Entirely to the, the right side specimen, it is, it is in the cylindrical shape and it has the coccyx here and the levator envelope, the tumor. So let's zoom in. You can see that the specimen has the waist and if the tumor sit here, the circumferential margin maybe is not good. It's not like in this, in the right side, the tumor is covered nicely with the, the levator muscle. So on the section you will see here, the tumor is sit here with uh, the levator cover the tumor. So this is the concept of the on section we all know, all of the surgeon knows that in order to get a good margin or good circumferential margin, you have to have the, something to cover the, the, the tumor. Okay, so the first point I, I would like to mention to you is you have to avoid the coning down specimen. So in order to do that, you need to know the perspective of anatomy when you do a extra elevator APE. If you are intended to do the, the 
the AP resection like you do a low interior resection like this, you will get the perforation or unintentional perforation or something uh, positive circumferential margin. So to avoid the uh, perforation, so you need a little bit margin by exciting the elevator with the with the specimen. So the next thing I would like to mention is that uh, the technical problem occurring during the APR or AP resection. First thing is the anatomy of the tapering mesorectum and poor visibility from narrowing peric space and visualization of post sagan is very limited from above. Okay, as you see, uh, see in this image, you see the point of the end of the mesorectum here. If the tumor, if the tumor is sit here and you intend to do a uh, the AP resection, like you do a low interior resection. Of course, you can get a beautiful pair like this, but at the inorectal junction, you can make a tumor perforation. So again, in this picture, if you follow your uh, nice plane in TAB and you're not uh, concerned about the tumor here, you may dig into the tumor and make a perforation. So if you know it, if uh, before surgery or you plan it before surgery by seeing the MRI, you have to plan to excite something over the tumor as this plan. Okay, for better understand, I have a footage, a little footage here. This is a uh, anatomy of the low anterior footage. Okay, the rectal. And now angle is here, is fully exposed before applied the saving. So this is nothing here apart from uh, the rectal tube. There's no mesorectal rectal at all, just and bare rectum. And if you intend to perform low anterior with dissection, the mesorectum rectum of the pelvic floor, but the tumor is sitting here, you will, you will enter the perforation or positive circumferential margin. Okay, so again, so be careful when you do physical examination and you found that the tumor is at the anorectal junction or you can, you can evaluate before by the MRI. If you see the picture like this, you see the tumor is near the levator and line. Uh, that's just less your concern about the, the margin, the circumferential margin. Again, See, so I think the MRI is required to determine the exact location of the tumor. If the tumor is, is, is near or located close, really closely to the levator, surgeon should keep in mind concern about the possibility of unintentional perforation. Okay. Okay, so now 10 years later, so let us look at the most recent evidence from the reviews. So the major of the evidence for meta-analysis or from systematic review uh, tell us that the major of the evidence indicate the decrease in the perforation rate in uh, lab poloscopic XRE weather. And some, uh, some author reports that improve the circumferential margin with the excellent elevator and improve local length. But unfortunately, you must concern about the wound complication and morbidity as a result of a large perineal defect. So you have to trade off between the improved the circumferential margin and the wound complication. Okay, so this graph again reveal you the important message from the study that compared between the conventional and the extra elevator APE. Both conventional and extra elevator are, are slightly different. It defeats disease free survival and neither provide the survival benefit. The survival benefit is uh, a little bit different and non significant. 
So pitfall and potential complication of the extra elevator is one, inadvertent perforation, two, neurovascular bundle injury during the anterior dissection, and three, as the previous speaker, Dr. Pawit and Dr. Ito mentioned, STA TME, we have a report of some urethral injury in prone position. Okay, so the, the technical you, you need to, uh, to learn is that when to stop to do the, the abdominal phase and turn to, to do a perineal phase. So you have to stop the abdominal phase at the liberated level, at the coccyx level, I think, and just below the seminal vesicle in, in anterior, and then turn the, the patient to the prone position to do a pelvic dissection. Like in this picture, then you stop the dissection just below the seminal vesicle anterior, and in the lateral, you stop at the neurovascular bundle, and then for the posterior, you stop at the level of the coccyx. But I think, however, the, the surgeon should, should plan precisely, precisely, I think, on the MRI at the location, the exact location point to stop the, the, the abdominal phase because it depends on the tumor extension. So here is a short video to demonstrate you when to stop the abdominal dissection. Okay. Okay, this is the line of the dissection. The tuba is at the inner rectal junction here. This is a quite beautiful posterior plane of the mesorectum. So the posterior dissection should be stopped at the coccyx level here. Do not dissect the posterior mesorectum from the levator. Just leave it attached to the to the tumor. Okay, this is uh, the anterior. You just stop at just below the seminal vesicle. And this is a lateral dissection. This is a neurovascular bundle. So after you dissect uh, the lateral dissection like this, you have to stop and then turn to the, 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 the perineal phase. This is a seminal vesicle, and the, as you see here, it's a dinoglia fracture. Yeah. For the abdominal phase, it's quite already. So this is this video is a, in a female patient. We uh, try to demonstrate you are the accelerator fashion. So I think not every case is necessarily to require last extension because uh, just tell her, tell her the margin by, by the MI before you are planned before you do a surgery. Not did uh, not do a wide vision of the two the, the skin because it is not a skin tumor like right. So after you cut the coccyx like this, you can you can insert your finger and and the teller how wide is is you wanted uh, from from your tumor. So you can tell her the margin of the liberator and try to avoid unnecessary excision. Okay. So. In this case, we leave some part of the levator that we can close the defect to prevent the perineal hernia. So not all, not all the case need the extra levator like the Y excision. So you can tell it by the, by the MRI and plan before you do a surgery. Okay. 
this is a thing I need to mention you because uh, when we do a, a AP detection in this position, this is quite uh, strange for us because mm, this is an unfamiliar anatomy to, to most of the surgeon that uh, coming from above or do a anterior, do a low anterior dissection from above or do a prone position, uh, AP detection. So thing you need to concern is that you may injure the, the ureter at this point. Yeah, as the Dr. Ito mentioned, the important landmark is the rectal ureteral muscle. Try to identify this structure before you uh, dissect dissection in the anterior uh, margin. You can you can be avoided by the palpate the ureter or use the ICT like poster it or say it or use the 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 AI system that that I think it is very nice uh, machine learning or AI presented by Dr. Ito. Okay. So this short video demonstrates you uh, to understand the important anatomy why why you do a uh, lab accelerator. This comes from the Indian doctor in YouTube. So here you flip the specimen now and you can see a really beautiful uh, seminal vesicle. Here is the important point. You need to concern the ureter when you cut the rectal ureter muscle. And then you see the beautiful seminal vesicle here. You see a process there. Yes, it's process and you see nerve. Yeah. You know what's for bundle or plexus here. Okay. Okay. Now there are several types of the AP dissection. Uh, it depends on, I think it depends on the tumor extension. The issue of anal excision is served for the really locally advanced tumor that extend to the issue of fossa, the accelerator APE, and the interspheric APE dissection. This is for the benign lesion, I think, for the, such as for the Crohn disease, with the patient have the, uh, the anal incontinence, so we can do the interspheric APE dissection. But there's, there's the new, new procedure that I would like to mention to you. I just, I just read it. Uh, a few weeks ago, that they call this article is from the the Theodore Doros, doctor from Greece. So this is a sphincter saving procedure. You will be amazing that that it can be sphincter saving. They call the hemi elevator excision. The idea is that uh, if tumor is sit in the light side, they do an accelerator excision and then go back to intestinal resection like this. For the left, they do like a low anterior resection and then resect specimen and do a hollow anal anastomosis. But I, I'm curious about the, 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 the anal function, but they said that, they claim that the anal function is not quite bad. So this is, I think the half, half blood, like a low anterior resection and the extra elevator combined. So in order to uh, do a sweeter saving procedure, it's quite new, I think, and I think it's quite interesting. A, li a little bit difficult to do, I think. It's not quite easy. Okay, this is a specimen for different type of the APE detection. This is the, the old paradigm, the cylindrical here, the old west specimen of honing down specimen here, the nice, Cylindrical with the coccyx here. The reason why, why we need to cut the coccyx because we can get more room. When you cut the coccyx, the coccyx out, you get a bigger space and then you can customize the, the levator uh, cutting according to your tumor extension. And on the right side, you see the, the issue and now extension specimen here. Reserved for the, the bigger uh, extension of locally advanced tumor. 
like in this patient after CCRT, she still have a very extensive tumor like this, involving the posterior vaginal wall and have a fistula like this. So we have to do the, the issue at all AP dissection and, and do a reconstruction with posterior vaginal wall with a, a catholic trap like this. You can see the superficial when it's nine strain of TME, and then we have to cut the levator. In this case, we cut the levator at the origin near the obturator membrane. And then we uh, have to uh, do a wide, very wide skin excision. And also as a total, nearly total of the ichor anal fat with the specimen out and reconstruction with the flap. And then we get this like this picture. This is a follow-up, I think one year later, there are no recurrence. Actually, I'm, I am not a big fan of the, the aggressive tumor like this. I think uh, Chulalongkorn University, Dr. Chu Chip and Dr. Songpon do it very well and very fantastic. If you like a more aggressive surgery like this, you have to watch the lecture of the ELSA that Dr. Songpon mentioned the uh, subclectomy or the accentuation where the minimal evasive approach this is quite nice lecture. So in conclusion, I think finally, the extra elevator concept is, is nothing, if nothing more than the principle of the on Buckley section. To, so to improve your circumferential margin and reduce the local recurrence. But however, it is not yet seen the benefit in terms of the, the overall survival. So you think you need to do is to recognize the, the different anatomy before and, and decide the operation uh, with the preoperative MRI. And you have to avoid the ureteral injury because in this area, the unfamiliar anatomy can, can result in, in the damage of the ureteral. And last, you have to trade off between the Y efficient and the reconstruction and wound morbidity. So that's all my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Sri Pong's very fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, slides. So, so we go to the last topic. We will present by uh, Associate Professor at the Pond He is a surgeon from the uh, Memo Invasive Surgery Unit Department of the Surgery Faculty of Medicine, Siran Hospital. Today, Professor Atapon will give us a lecture in the topic of total neoadjuvant therapy in MIS rectal cancer surgeries, the experience challenges. Professor Atapon, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pavit, uh, for your high introduction and your uh, high invitation. Uh, Nat, could you share my slide? I'm so sorry because uh, I got the technical problem of to my computers and now I cannot share my slide by myself. Uh, I, I have nothing to dis discuss. Uh, for the uh, locally advanced nectar cancer, we all know that the preoperative treatment of radiation and chemotherapy is beneficial for locally uh, advanced nectar cancer. Dutch TME trial is uh, one of the landmark study. They already published the 10 year local recurrence uh, is not significant different between the, the uh, sorry, is significant different in the uh, short cord RT followed by TME group. Uh, and for the preoperative short cord RT is significantly uh, have a beneficial effect to the negative circumferential margin group and also the state three cancer. Think please. Uh, for long cause neoadjuvant chemo radiation, the 10 year local recurrence is still significant lower in preoperative CCRT group. If you remember the five year local recurrence is a six 
percent in uh, surgery alone group and uh, sorry in in uh, long course CCRT and 11 percent in the surgery alone group. But for 10 year, uh, the result is a seven percent in CCRT group and a 10 percent in the surgery alone group. That is a still significant uh, different. Whereas the overall survival is the same. And for Stockholm three try, they compare classical short cord RT means you give them uh, the patient five k by five days, and after that you surgery on the next week follow. And uh, compare to the short cord RT with the delayed surgery, and compare to the long cord CCRT. The result demonstrate that uh, there are no significant difference in terms of overall survival, local recurrence, detent metastasis, and complication. However, if you go to uh, compare only the short cord, classical short cord RT and uh, short cord RT with delayed surgery, the complication is significant higher in the short, classical short cord RT group. For the delay surgery, uh, we uh, imply the uh, data from Dash TME trial. The uh, maximal response of the radiation is about the 10 to 11 weeks after completion of the radiation. And that is the highest chance of the PCR pathological complete response. After this point, the effect of the radiation uh, seem to be plateau means you not get the uh, uh, more PCR late after this point. Therefore, I think uh, nowadays all of us perform the surgery after the completion of radiation about ten to twelve weeks. This is uh, the the data that we imply from the Dutch TME trials. The uh, worst worst uh, worst uh, benefit. Uh, sorry, the worst, uh, the disadvantage of prolonged uh, surgery time between the uh, completion of radiation to surgery uh, can cause a technical difficulty because of uh, if you wait uh, more, the fibrosis formation may getting more than uh, if you operate uh, quicker. And uh, you may increase the risk of wound complication and also the synchronous metastasis. Why was that? I want. I, I'm gonna show to the next slides. This is a uh, uh, the usual that we uh, operate. Usually, back to the old day, you uh, give the patient with the long course CCRT. Mean the patient receive uh, fifty to uh, fifty four k of radiation that uh, can, uh, gonna occur in uh, about five weeks. And after that, you will wait uh, six to eight weeks and operate the patient. And after that, about four to six weeks, you give a uh, H1K mortality to the patient. But uh, nowadays, the package is uh, you give the long course CCRT to, to the patient. And after that, you wait uh, a little bit longer to 10 to 12 weeks. And after that, you do surgery. Four to six weeks after that, you give them the H1K mortality. That means the patient wait about 19 to 21 weeks after uh, completion of the CCRT to receive the systemic dose of chemotherapy. Therefore, the long-term survival has remained unchanged if you, do, if you still do uh, the, the practice just like the classical approach. And also the distant metastasis are now the leading cause of death. It's not the local recurrence. Because uh, if you wait too long to give the systemic chemo to the patient, we gonna fail with the uh, distant metastasis. Next, please. And this, the new concept of the total neoadjuvant therapy, it means to deliver a full dose chemotherapy uh, a little bit earlier, in addition to standard neoadjuvant chemo radiation before definite surgery. We divide it to two terms of TNT. The first is uh, induction chemotherapy. We give first with the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, followed by the neoadjuvant chemo radiation, and after that uh, we do the surgery. And the next term is uh, consolidation. 
means you give the conventional neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy followed by the neoadjuvant chemotherapy and followed by surgery we call consolidation and uh, for the benefit of the TNT means you can uh, give them uh, early chemotherapy systemic dose to target the subclinical micrometastasis and also to improve the compliance rate of chemotherapy. We are surgeon, we, some we have uh, some experience that uh, patient, some patients cannot uh, recover well after you pass the chemolidation, you pass the surgery. And after that, the, they cannot tolerate the chemotherapy. Mean if you move the chemotherapy early, early to surgery, they can they they may uh, have a more to improve compliance rate to chemotherapy more than if you keep to to the adjuvant dose. And uh, the next thing is that uh, you can assess the tumor biology because you still have something to measure. If you uh, keep them like uh, you treat the micrometastasis disease, when you have already removed the tumor out of from the patient, we cannot uh, uh, measure our treatment because uh, you step forward with the adjuvant chemotherapy. You cannot have something to measure that this tumor had a, a response to the chemotherapy that we give or not. And uh, the next thing is that uh, you can potentially increase the acetyl resection or you get the more late of the PCR. And uh, for, for this ELA, if you, the patient had a clinical complete response, some patient may candidate for the wash and wait protocol. Uh, the next is uh, our experience. Uh, after this is, uh, I can show you the, our experience uh, of the uh, TNT at uh, Sierra Hospital uh, by our unit. We do the retrospective review from prospective maintained database from uh, uh, 2016 to uh, 21 at MS unit Sierra Hospital. Uh, we, we select, we really selected patient to do this uh, protocol because uh, uh, back to uh, allow 2016, uh, 17 or something like that, the main uh, problem of the doing the consolidation cases uh, is uh, the reimbursement. At that time, we cannot give the full fork or C-lock to the patient without pay. Mean the government pay only if you uh, uh, you give the oxaliplatin as the adjuvant therapy, not the consolidation uh, chemotherapy. Therefore, we really uh, selected patient to 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 receive this treatment because uh, all of these patient need to pay by themselves. Uh, the government is not uh, is not uh, over coverage the cost of the oxaliplatin. But uh, today uh, is a uh, good news that uh, the oxaliplatin is already uh, uh, approved to give as a consolidation. Therefore, uh, nowadays we don't have the problem of the reimbursement issue. We uh, allow 20 cases, uh, this, uh, all of these cases, uh, four cases is uh, induction or upfront chemotherapy and the 16 is a consolidation. Next, please. And the mean age of patient is at 60 years and uh, rarely from 40s to 80 years and the majority is a male. And the median in this 10 form in which is about five centimeter, rarely from two to eight centimeters. Mean the majority of the patient is a lower lower leg thumb. And uh, this is a, uh, I think uh, I shoot this topic to this conference because uh, for all of us in this uh, area, we, uh, we, we cope with the same uh, situation. Uh, we cannot imply the, the data from uh, Western country or from developed countries to our developing countries. 
we still, I, I mean, uh, all of uh, our practice still uh, uh, COVID, uh, big bulky tumor, impending obstruction, and this is a real life situation. And similar to the, this uh, study, uh, about 36 cases or 30% uh, of the case, we need to have a pre-operative diversion before we perform the surgery, be uh, be uh, before we start the chemotherapy or chemo radiation because uh, the tumor is too big and the patient already have uh, some part of the uh, obstructive symptom. And uh, for the neoadjuvant chemo radiation, the dose majority is uh, 55K, means you hope with a uh, very locally advanced Usually, uh, the dose of the chemo, uh, the radiation that the uh, radiotherapist give to the patient is a fifty point four k. But uh, all of the advanced, locally advanced case that uh, the tumor is quite big or you have a lot of nodal disease, they are gonna give the fifty four, uh, similar to the dose of the anal uh, cancer. Next, please, and. Uh, Chemotherapy regimen majority is uh, all out capsidabine compared to the uh, infusional fire fuel. This is uh, not uh, similar to the Western country. Uh, I know that uh, some center in uh, Thailand, they do the protect fire fuel, but uh, majority of us uh, still do uh, only uh, infusional fire fuel means uh, you give them only the uh, four day of fire fuel infusional uh, and uh, four day before the radiation stop, we call this is a major regimen. Uh, they already have uh, the study that proved that uh, all of capsidabine similar to the protect fire fuel and uh, better than uh, infusional fire fuel. Therefore, usually we use the all of capsidabine more than the infusion of fire fuel for the preoperative chemotherapy regimen. Next, please. And uh, this is uh, uh, our data after completion of the, uh, the radiation, the mean, the median uh, time of researching MRI is uh, 60 days, valid from uh, about 23 to uh, 150. Uh, this caused by the problem of the COVID outbreak situation. Uh, and uh, the, therefore some patient uh, got the problem of the, to getting the MRI after the treatment. And uh, this is the uh, uh, clinical T-state and state and margin from in, uh, restaging MRI. You will see that uh, the majority of the patient is a uh, clinical T3 by the restaging MRI and also the nodal disease and T10 uh, CIM. Therefore, this is uh, not a good candidate case to operate the patient at that time. And also we use the EMVI and also the TRG grading system to determine uh, this patient uh, should uh, step forward for surgery or should receive the consolidation chemotherapy. Next, please. And uh, systemic chemotherapy that we keep as a consolidation majority is a C-lock regimen, means you get the uh, allow capsidabine combined with the oxalate patin, and uh, about one third is a four fork regimen. Next, please. Uh, and, um, Mean ta median time uh, from completion of the radiation to surgery is about uh, 240 days. Mean uh, you, uh, the surgery is about is occur about eight to nine months after completion of the radiation, and you have a surgery at that time. This uh, main uh, this may cause the uh, question for all of you that. Uh, can we operate easily in this kind of the case because we wait very long, long time. Usually we operate only three months after completion of the uh, radiation, but all of this case we operate about eight to nine months. 
after completion of the radiation, you will see the laparoscopic surgery is still, I mean, still operate to this patient is feasible because uh, we do uh, open surgery about 40%, but if you remember the, the number that I mentioned to you, 30% of, of this case already have a preoperative diversion. And uh, I have a problem uh, about this case that uh, I cannot op uh, perform laparoscopic surgery when the patient already have divert because of the, I try, but uh, it's not gonna, it's not be, uh, it's not work for me. But uh, after my talk, maybe uh, some other surgeon uh, can, can discuss to this topic. Uh, if you can operate uh, in, 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 in the laparoscopic approach, I would like to learn from you. And uh, uh, for the operation, uh, majority is uh, APR because uh, the tumor is quite low and uh, for THME is about 30% of the case and uh, low anterior is about 15%. Next, please. And the complication occur in two cases. Uh, first one, the one is a uh, osteomy necrosis, and the uh, second one is a uh, post-operative bleeding that need to be uh, reoperated. But we cannot file the uh, the bleeding point just only oozing, and we just stop bleeding, and the bleeding uh, stop. And the pathological result is quite, I mean, uh, surprising. To, Link, uh, surprised me because uh, we got the uh, uh, YPT silo and silo mean the patient had a uh, pathological complete response is about one third of the patient. This is a uh, you 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 remember this is a uh, the case that had a uh, poor uh, MRI restaging uh, uh, factors that we did not perform surgery at the uh, eight to uh, sorry. 10 to 12 weeks as usual. We, we, we uh, keep them the consolidation chemotherapy and wait to eight to nine months. And we get like a 30% of the pathological complete response. And more than that, 25% uh, is uh, only stage one, YPT2 and zero. And 25% uh, 20, is a YPT3 and zero. And only about 20% is a uh, uh, state three. And all of this case that I learned from this study for the, uh, the, the tumor, the biology of the tumor that uh, if you keep them, already keep them the neo one chemolidation and the tumor is, is not respond to the chemolidation. You keep them the full dose of systemic chemotherapy and tumor is not still not uh, uh, respond from the uh, systemic chemotherapy. You don't have anything to give them and you decided to operate on this patient. I'm gonna tell you that the sad story is uh, the, the, the surgery uh, that you perform is not help the patient at all. Because uh, uh, from our study, the dis distant metastasis is occur very, very fast for the, uh, the tumor that uh, have uh, resist to the, uh, the, the CCRT and the full dose systemic treatment. Because uh, from the study, if the pa one patient had a, a YPT3 and 2 and all, all, uh, only four months after surgery, they de he developed the uh, lung metastasis that uh, the, the CT before we do the surgery did not uh, identify this lung metastasis. And uh, for one, one third of the this, uh, YP T1 and uh, T3N1 developed the distant metastasis at six months. This is a really sad story. And next is uh, what do we learn from this result? Uh, first is uh, the PCR rate is uh, 30% in TNT group. As I mentioned from uh, beginning that uh, TNT may cost, uh, may cost, potentially cost you the, the higher rate of PCR. Because uh, if you go back to the uh, standard uh, uh, study before, majority of the patient has a PCR rate about 15 to 20%. 
but uh, from this study, we have a PCR rate uh, about 30% is quite higher than the usual treatment. And especially this is an uh, initial poor response NCCRT cases. And the next is a uh, laparoscopic surgery is flexible. As I mentioned to you, 60% that we can successfully perform in laparoscopic approach, 40% uh, that we perform open surgery, 75% of open surgery cases already have a diversion. Therefore, we did not try the laparoscopic surgery in, in that situation. And uh, the next please. And the uh, complication is uh, acceptable. Uh, two in 20 cases uh, is about 10% compared to our previous study that we already report about 11.7% uh, in the surgery within the eight weeks after completion of radiation to surgery. And uh, for, for the uh, more than eight weeks, we have a complication about 18.6%. The problem is uh, it's a different time of the study because uh, uh, this is a recent study that we have a 10% compared to several, several years ago. That I mean, uh, the number of the cases that uh, we do the surgery is uh, like uh, you have more experience. The complication complication may different, and to to that time, or uh, you have a more uh, updated instrument to to help you to to perform the surgery safely. And the last one is a uh, in poor response patient, as I mentioned. Surgery has no benefit on oncological outcomes. In that uh, particular type of patients, I think uh, the additional uh, chemotherapy uh, uh, combined with the targeted therapy or immunotherapy may be the, the, the ways to go. Uh, should not be surgery as I mentioned before. Uh, next, next please. Thank you very much for, for your high attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Atapon, for your uh, excellent lectures. And so very, very nice result. <laughs> Completely a pathologic response 30%. Very, very impressive. So we gone to the session of Q&A. So, could you please share the video of the speaker? Can can you manage all the speaker in 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 the same view? Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so we have we have uh, the question from the France to Professor Supakit. <laughs> the The question is uh, why the biopsies and tattoo to the specimen are abandoned. Okay, thank you. Is the because of the when you do the biopsy. The usually have the scarring or the fibrosis happen to the lesion, and it's more difficult for the dissection by the endoscopic treatment. So that's why the we just need only the photo, and no need for the biopsy. And also with the tattooing, the because when you do the tattooing, usually you tattoo it into the submucosal layer, and the dye is the spreading all around, not just the point that you put the the dye in. So the Sometimes is when you do a tattooing close to the lesion, uh, it spread into the lesion. So when we do the dissection, so submucosal layer is very difficult to distinguish from the 
dye or the tattooing color. So the, that's more make that's for more difficult to do the endoscopic treatment. So just take the photo is okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so only one question. <laughs> and your speaker have any question? You can ask together. <laughs> Can, can I ask Professor the Masaiki Ito? Yes. The, your robotic system is very really quite impressive. And then uh, can I ask, uh, is this have a chance to available in the market soon? I mean, available for the other country to buy, purchase or something? Yes, of course. So now uh, we are applying to the government to permit uh, uh, this robotic uses in Japan. And maybe uh, beginning of next year, maybe January or February, uh, government will permit to use this robotic system in Japan. And maybe, so our parents' company is very big company. So Asahi Intech, maybe you don't know the name of the company. So Asahi Intech is a very big. And also that they have the very uh, many, many, uh, company is all over the world. Uh, I, I don't know the uh, Thailand, I, I don't know, but the, maybe so several uh, years later, uh, you can see our robotic system. So mm -hmm. our robotic system is an entirely different concept is uh, a little bit different from the Da Vinci system. So Da Vinci system is operator is sitting, sitting uh, the remote, remote from the patient, but mm -hmm. uh, my uh, robotic system is uh, operator is standing uh, seated along the patient and the operator uh, performed uh, their own uh, laparoscopic surgery. And the operator's right hand and the right foot, right foot pedal is controlled the uh, three arms of a uh, robotic system. So only one operator uh, can operate the uh, like uh, three surgeons operate uh, laparoscopic surgery. You, uh, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This means okay. like the, the surgeon have more than two arms. Then yes. Uh, no, yeah, uh, one, one scope and the two arms. Ah, yes. 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 So, so let's, one, 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 additional, uh, one additional arm compared to the Da Vinci system. Maybe nice. Da Vinci's assistant had only one uh, arms. And uh, in Japan, the most of the hospital is uh, surgeon, is uh, assistant uh, sitting. Uh, along the patient and the support uh, by use of the usual laparoscopic devices for the mm. uh, operator. So maybe, so if we, uh, you uh, use our robotic system, maybe only one solo surgery will be uh, done. I see. So mm -hmm. how about the price? It's better uh, than the Da Vinci? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> uh, actually the secret now, but uh, uh, about the eight, eight, times less than the Da Vinci system. Wow. Yes. That's really good news for us. Yes, yes. Very price is very so uh, good, good, good news for you. Yeah, yeah. We, we do know the, the Asahi companies, but uh, only for the beer. And then... Uh, uh, no. yes. <laughs> yes, but the Asahi Intake is uh, very focusing on uh, catheter, uh, the uh -huh. rad radiological catheter. The share is uh, uh, maybe the number one all over the world, but uh, Surgeon, uh, most of the surgeon do not know the name of the Asahi intake. Mm, I see. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Right, Professor mm -hmm. Ito. Yes, yeah, uh, Professor Ito, Bitu. I have to uh, congratulation for, for yeah. your successful in uh, answer a robotic platform. I remember yeah. four or five years ago when, I, when we visit your center, yeah, I saw only one single hand of your robot figure yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now you got four, three arms already. Yes, I'm very. I think gonna be very successful in the mm -hmm. future. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Professor Bitun, can I ask you uh, one question? So the uh, in Japan is a, a robotic system is uh, going north. So the uh, recently the uh, very many more surgeon, corrective surgeon. Uh, now perform uh, with the robotic system, uh, especially the X XI uh, system. Very good system, I understand. But the uh, uh, reimbursement is the uh, same as the laparoscopic surgery. So more robotic surgery 
is cost, uh, hostel, not pay. So that this That's is right. one of the problem in Japan. So please show, uh, show me the, uh, how about Thailand, current status of the number of the robotic surgery, uh, especially for the colorectal surgery, col colorectal cancer. Right, I think, I think so far we have uh, seven uh, uh, robotic machine. I mean, uh, including the WC SI and uh, XI, right? Mm -hmm. And for the reimbursement system in Thailand, we do not get any uh, reimbursement yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the patient have to pay by themselves. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I think uh, many institutes, including my institute, just setting some funding you know, to support to uh, like a, a, a pay some some expense uh, on top for a patient to mm -hmm. make the procedure uh, available right mm -hmm. so that's the way we do it in thailand mm -hmm. right. thank you very much very similar situation in japan now mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. any more, more question reserve with yeah so if we have a question from uh, Professor Warabut, uh, the question is, what is the role of the ICG for rectal cancer surgery? Do we really need it? Uh, in your opinion, Professor Ito. Hmm? Pardon? Sorry. Uh, what, 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 uh, what about the ICG and fluorescent endoscope? Is it ah, really needed yes. for surgery? Uh, definitely good. So uh, no doubt, very, very good. So uh, if uh, as for our institute, uh, all cases in performing the rectal cancer, so always we uh, evaluate uh, blood perfusion in oral colon by fluorescent scope uh, after injecting the ICG. So all cases. So because uh, uh, after applying such a system with the ICG system, uh, leakage rate is 12% uh, to 3%, reducing. So I think the ICG is uh, uh, definitely the uh, very good tool to reducing the anasmotic leakage. Also, uh, it's warming. Yo, can well, you, warming. <laughs> yeah, can you mention or criticize about the Pilates try? That's ah, yeah. the, result, the result of the ICT is not, you know, so. so Pillar two, Pila, Pila two. Pila three. A, a three. three. Randomized trial. Yeah, in like uh, the maybe, cancer. Maybe I, I heard the, uh, this trial stop, no? It's, it's public already, but yeah, it's, it's uh, closed before yes, yes. reach the number of the patients. And mm -hmm. the result public is not different between using ICT or, or conventional, not using the ICT. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. So, 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 but uh, I think many surgeons uh, mentioned about, as you mentioned, that's the, the trial course before they reach a number of the patients. Mm. So, my opinion is that, uh, so lightning checking the, uh, by our eyes, is uh, definitely the very clear. So uh, uh, in terms of the uh, blood perfusion, so uh, definitely the ICG system is a uh, very good one, is my opinion. I, I, I agree with you. Le mm. Recently, I also use ICT. I think mm. especially in the patient who, who is obese, Yes. because yeah, when they decide to cut the marginal artery, in yes. the, the, the thin patient below BMI, mm -hmm. it's, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. And we can yeah. see the bleeding really clearly, but in obese patient, sometimes it's difficult. But yes, okay. But uh, uh, there is a one problem for the obese patient. They are the their belly arteries are sclerotic and uh, or the, some patient had a, a diabetic middle dust, DM. So such a patient is sometimes lightning is very weak. So the uh, sometimes so obese patient is not clearly identified the uh, blood perfusion, uh, even if we use uh, uh, such a system. So this is our uh, experience for the uh, obese patient.
So we have another question from the Professor Nobdenai to uh, Professor Atapon. Uh, in your opinions, any kind of a regular cancer patient that you offer TNT as first choice of treatment? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dobnatai, for your questions. Uh, usually, we, we, uh, I use for the, the case that uh, is more, I think this is a more, more systemic uh, than local disease. Uh, for example, like a, a bulky, node, bulky nodal disease. If you uh, hope with uh, the patient that uh, start with a uh, uh, massive nodal disease, this case should uh, start with the uh, uh, induction chemotherapy before the CCRT. And uh, in our study, we do the induction chemotherapy in the lesion that the uh, questionable of uh, distant metastasis like a uh, liver or lung metastasis. We start with the induction chemotherapy and after that we re-evaluate re the, the lesion again. Therefore, uh, induction is, uh, is, is good for the, uh, the disease is more systemic than the local disease. Uh, I would like to add, add a, a little bit about TNT to Dr. Tapon. I think another uh, approach is also really interesting, especially in during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I have experience to try to use the consolidation chemotherapy, uh, TNT, with the, after we give the 5 by 5 RT, that is a similar protocol of lapidotide. I think it's really useful because pat patient uh, have to visit during the RT only five day instead of a uh, 25 day or 30 day in a long course CCRT. And, and, and the response is quite good in my experience. Probably next time I can share the result with you. And I think it's suitable for our country. That's the problem with the, the, the vesting date of the RT. So, so it will be benefit. That is my opinion. And can I ask one question for Professor Atapon about the, the field of the operation when uh, after you completely TNT and perform the surgery, what about the adhesions or intraoperatively is too much or, or not? Yeah, uh, for my experience, depends on the response of the tumor. In the very good response case, the surgery is uh, a little bit uh, different from usual case, but uh, for the, the case that uh, the tumor is not uh, respond well to the systemic treatment, the surgery is uh, a little bit, uh, you know, not, not a little bit, it's very, very difficult compared to the usual case. I'm, I'm not know why, but this is uh, my observation. Because of the, the timing is not different uh, between the good response case and the poor response case but the, the operative field is uh, totally different between the two, two groups. Yeah. Uh, Professor Ito, may I ask you the question about the TATME? Yes. Uh, as you show us the result from the Norwegian country is not so good for the TATME. I think uh, because I think the, the, the learning or training system for the surgeon who, who would like to perform T, TATME is really important. How about in Japan? Uh, do you have any guideline or recommendation for the training for the TATME live from JSS, similar to the, the, the JSS laparoscopic surgery assessment, assessment skill? Can you mention about that? Actually, the, we have no guideline about the training or the uh, some mentoring system before uh, starting the TATME in Japan now. But uh, 
uh, actually, uh, we have very little opportunity to perform a cadaveric training course in Japan. So, uh, but and also the in a, under very current status of COVID nineteen. So, so uh, a doctor cannot see to the uh, visit to another hospital now. So, uh, in the current situation. Um, you, you know that uh, in our institute we have the very, uh, dry simulator training system, so which has I uh, invading the dry simulator uh, uh, named Itobox, so very similar to the uh, human body, human pelvic organ. So, but uh, next, actually the next month we we will start the uh, dry box uh, and the live surgery uh, training course of TATME. So, actually. Uh, later uh, sooner so we need to uh, uh, decide some guideline uh, before starting TTME but uh, so uh, in a meeting uh, conference so I repeatedly say to the uh, doctors uh, please start uh, from the easy case and uh, female uh, T1 T2 female uh, so don't don't start uh, T3 or male case. So that easy case is a, a better uh, uh, guideline to start the TATME uh, in safe manner. Thank you. I, I, I think if the COVID-19 pandemic subside, we probably can cooperate, you know, to, to make this kind of the training. So I think you can remember uh, two years ago, Dr. Bawit, in Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. that we that you yes. the, we set up the TATME cadaveric workshop. Mm -hmm. I think we you can make the guideline and we can 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 ask uh, Professor Kitano and Professor Vitun to you know for the MESDA to set up uh, mm -hmm. the training. I mm -hmm. think last time in Chiang Mai we we have only shine of the cadaveric, but I think. Dye box like your ito box is very really important for practice the first thing suture first mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you know we should practice the suture that mm -hmm. you should ask in the dye dye box first then go to the cadaver. Mm -hmm. Yes, so well, watching uh watching uh watching operation uh performed by expert is the first step. Second one is uh, train the parsing suture repeatedly. And the third one is uh, a dry box, like a ito box. So, and also uh, learning curve uh, in TATME is uh, to be set uh, about uh, 40 cases recently. So maybe uh, uh, Netherlands trial showed that uh, they mentoring uh, till the 10 experience, but their uh, local recurrence rate is about 10%. So I think the 10 experiences are lack not, uh, on the way to the uh, learning curve. So 40 case is mandatory, uh, very safe experiences, very important. So uh, expert, uh, if, if they can expertise uh, till the 40 cases is a very important, I think. Oh, okay. I hope to see the training guideline coming from you soon, so <laughs> we can cooperate. I hope. So this time you're coming to Hatjai also? <laughs> <laughs> to Songkha? Yeah. Professor Ito, can I ask you some, some more questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, I I saw your your AI for detect the the urethral. Is yeah. that gonna be uh, like incorporate in your robot or not? The uh, AI system. Yes, currently no, mm. because uh separately uh separate team is uh, inventing a new uh, system. Uh, one part one team is AI, another one is a robot. So. But AI is uh, one of the promising uh, tool uh, to avoid uh, such a uh, intraoperative uh, complication. So I think that um, in, we focus mainly to the uh, identification of ureter or the uh, IMA or the 
more uh, very uh, easy uh, cases. So the TATV uh, to detect the uh, urethra is a very difficult uh, mm -hmm. question. So the uh, actually the AI team is uh, currently the uh, as a first step ureter uh, to avoid the injury of ureter in a laparoscopic uh, sigmoidectomy or rotator resection is a first uh, step. And second one is a hypogastric nerve. Mm -hmm. Nerve is also the very, uh, we could uh, identify the uh, hypogastric nerve by AI uh, deep learning system. So uh, TATME actually a little bit a difficult <laughs> uh, question. Thank you. Thank you, Sirpon. Okay, thank you very much. So I think this is time. Yes, Prof. And I will invite <laughs> Professor Vito. To... Right. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Bovit and uh, his uh, organizing team. Uh, uh, and I would like to express my appreciation for his effort. Uh, to orchestrate just uh, such a, a beautiful and useful uh, uh, series of lecture to combat uh, rectal cancer. Yeah. After I listening uh, all uh, lectures from my speakers, uh, something just uh, coming to my mind. If I want to be able to do ESD like a uh, professor super kid to do uh, TATME like uh, Professor Ito and Pravit to do uh, interspinkling uh, resection and all things, including the knowledge of the um, chemo radiation like uh, Professor Atapon, how long I need to spend for learning, perhaps uh, over all of my life, a hundred years or something. That means uh, we cannot stay alone. We cannot work alone uh, anymore. So we need to make our team, we need to set up our network or connection and uh, to know how to uh, send the proper patient to someone uh, we know that they're gonna uh, look after the patient the best or, or the most difficult case that uh, you cannot do that, right? And <clears throat> Uh, on behalf of the MESTA, I would like to commit that this uh, first uh, 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 meeting, uh, webinar, uh, just uh, after we, we stopped for quite a while due to a uh, pandemic of COVID-19. And this is just the beginning. We are uh, still uh, preparing another three uh, webinar, including the hands-on workshop, if possible, on the way. For example, uh, in November 13 this year, uh, we're gonna have a morning section of the uh, smart surgeons, smart exposure, leading by uh, Professor Siripong and uh, uh, Professor Nini in the near future. And another two like uh, 18 uh, MESTA upper GI workshop by Professor Sute, and also the trainer trainer sometime at the end or the beginning of next year to, to, to uh, guarantee that uh, uh, we can uh, convey the uh, best thing to our member of MESTA, right? And finally, I would like to thank uh, Professor Kitano, Professor Ito, uh, Professor Bovit and his organization team, all speakers and the participants uh, either a member or non-member of MESTA that approaching nearly 200 uh, participants at the top, uh, at the middle of the meeting, right? And uh, uh, above all, we like uh, to thank uh, our uh, uh, long-term uh, uh, friend and sponsor, uh, Olympus and Medtronic that supports us for a long time. Uh, so far, we approaching the fifth year of the MESTA that we uh, organize a, a, a lot of the activities already. So uh, I 
hope we will join together again uh, for next uh, webinar. And thank you, thank you everyone for uh, support us and giving an excellent and methods center uh, lecture today. Thank you. And uh, have a safe uh, uh, of yourself, not to go anywhere that leads to get mm -hmm. the uh, COVID-19. Even though we, I think everybody already got the vaccination, but do not, do not, uh, 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 <clears throat> do to be aware of to be aware as uh, uh, we, uh, like uh, all of you have a good health and we can come back together again. Thank you very much, everybody. everybody Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kitano. See you later. See you again next time. Yeah. Shall we have the good photo? Oh, yeah, please. Good photo. Yeah. 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 So, um, I will capture the bring, bring bring capture. together in one yeah. page. Yeah. So everybody smile. One, two, three. <laughs> one more time, please. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.